So we're good? Uh, yeah, we'll get started in a minute, Todd. Thanks for... <laughs> Okay, so you're going to call me tonight at 7, right? No, explain to him what you're doing. So Todd, we're, we're getting started now. Are, uh, special meeting was scheduled for 4.30. Is that going to work for you? 4.30. Uh, 4.30 will work, yes. Okay. All right, we're going to get started in a minute. Thanks for being in. Okay, uh, I'll... I'll I look for a call back at 4.30. Thank you. No, we're no, stay on the line. Yeah, can, can you stay on? We're, we're getting ready to get started in a minute here. Where is he? Can you hang up? Can you hang up? <laughs> it's 4.32. Yeah, where is he? Yes. Yeah, Birmingham, Alabama. Are they a different time zone? No. Sure? I don't believe so. Oh, it perhaps. might be an hour. That's the same. Central. Central. I was in you're, start, well, you're telling me oh, you're starting the meeting here. now. Yes. You know what I'm you're we're starting the meeting now, now. Todd. Hang in there. Get <laughs> okay. ready to stand and do the Pledge of Allegiance. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We'll be watching you. Okay. Oh, yeah, I'll just do it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you can sit right here. Yes. I'm going to move, and she'll come over here. Yeah. Huh? No, I was going to say she wants to sit next to the center. Thank you. Okay, uh, let's go ahead and call this meeting to order. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. Uh, thank you, everybody, for being with us. A challenge on a number of fronts has happened this afternoon, and I know it feels like we just finished the last budget process because we pretty much did. So um, I know I'm excited to be back here. And <laughs> so. Um, to a clear, open process. Uh, we appreciate all participation. Um, we're very thankful that we were able to welcome our newest board member, Maureen Goff. Thank you for being here with us. Thank you. Um, one of our board members, uh, Mr. Gelson, is joining us remotely. Uh, he is Zoomed in. And uh, Rebecca Watley, our uh, other board member, will be joining us uh, shortly. So uh, hopeful, hopefully we will be able to cover our our selectman budget and our board education budget presentations uh, this evening and kind of set our agenda a little bit further uh, for how we're going to proceed through the rest of our workshops. Uh, see, we can get everything wrapped up in a timely manner. Valerie, thank you for getting everything together for us. Um, very much appreciate it. So, uh, without further ado, I think that we are prepared to move on uh, to our selectman budget presentation. You're ready for it, Irene? I am ready. Wonderful. Okay, so the Board of Selectmen met with um, department heads, boards and commissions, um, worked on um, our budgets. We're um, line by line, et cetera, et cetera, and um, we have a presentation to go through and um, let you know what we've done. So the considerations that we've had, like I said, we've, we've sat with our boards or commissions. We've thoroughly scrutinized every budget, line by line. Um, also, you know, as always, we've used zero-based budgeting. Basically, that means that we're um, starting from zero, except for any contracts that we currently um, are involved in and engaged in. Um, those, most of those are um, union contracts for um, personnel, um, as well as non-union contracts or agreements that we have, employment agreements. And those are already set in stone. Some of them go out two years, three years. We have actually um, three unions yet to go this year. So we're assuming um, in, in all of those a 2.5% increase in salary adjustment. Um, all of our others have been somewhere in that neighborhood as well. So you know we try and keep it pretty much the same across the board. So the ones that are in our budget now are not necessarily 
ready for July 1st, but we're going to assume the two and a half increase on those budgets that still need to be go, th go through. So we're working on those right now. I have one tomorrow morning and one a couple next week. So we're working on it. But anyways, that's something to just keep in mind that, you know, we don't have that um, locked in yet, but we will. Um, and again, we're continuing to um, implement the line-by-line -line detail wherever possible. So if people are following along, you can go into ClearGov, you can open a line, and it'll actually give you, um, whether it be a capital item or an expense item, it'll give you as much detail as possible for our department heads, boards, and commissions that have gone in and actually given that detail so that when people have questions about a particular item in the budget, that we'll give that detail where we can. And um, if it's not in ClearGov, um, we are um, very open to anybody calling us and asking us, having a conversation, sitting down with us or our finance director. She's happy to sit down and, and discuss whatever questions people have about the budget. Um, we had about four different um, uh, workshops, Saturday mornings and evenings, um, and went through, like I said, every uh, department, board, and commission. So um, this is what we will show you now. Um, Basically, as an introduction to our budget, um, we actually are giving you today a budget that shows a 0.5% expense increase over last year. Um, this includes um, budgets for the town government, transfers, and debt service. Um, we did have a meeting with our um, long-range capital last week. Um, off that list, we um, probably shaved off about 50% of the capital requests. Um, some of those items went to, uh, and we can give you more detail later, but just so you know, um, some of those went into ARPA funding versus taxation funding, um, and then some of them were put off for, you know, subsequent years. So um, between the Board of Ed and the Board of Selectmen, like I said, we cut probably about half of that budget um, off the, you know, off the, the initial requests that came in from everybody. And when we go through the budget workshops that you guys want to go through, um, we can actually go through department by department, whichever ones you want, you know, to dive into further, and we can talk about those capital requests when, when you're ready to do that. But like I said, for right now, with the town government, the transfers, and the debt service, we have a 0.5% expense budget increase over last year. Um, there's a requested increase of expenses of substantially lower than the current annual inflation rate of 3.1. This is attributed to additional focus on our, by our department heads and our boards and commissions on achieving greater operational efficiencies. I applaud and I appreciate the work that they did on their budgets this year. Um, they know when they come in to see me that um, I'm going to ask for cuts no matter what. So um, they were very gracious to um, take the cuts that I suggested or that we worked on together. Um, there is a placeholder for the transfers to and from other funds equal to last year's approved budget, and we'll be looking forward to working with you guys in regards to um, the reviewing capital in greater detail, especially in consideration for the various grants that are available. So we're looking at that. Um, there is remaining ARPA funds that still need to be obligated, but they have to be obligated by this coming December 2024. So therefore, um, the Board of Selectmen has um, capital project recommendations for your consideration, and we can talk about that further in future meetings. Because the grand list growth is only 0.19%, the, the, we recommend that the Board of Finance be very considerate to our taxpayers as they look to um, look at these mill rate changes because they didn't, they frowned on any mill rate changes last year with the reval. I was hoping that with last year's reval going into this year's budget, we had some grand list growth, but we had very little from over from last year. So. We're looking at a, um, is that right, 0 .01? No, it should be, it should be 0 0.19, 0 .19, not 019. So we'll fix that for some reason. I'm not sure why that zero is in there. But like I said, we are coming to you with a 0.5% increase on a 0.19 increase on the grand list. So it's still a adjustment to the mill rate, just with ours alone. Um, right now, we're working on health insurance rates. Um, the projected rate increase that we heard in the beginning of our search for better insurance was 19.86 increase. Um, so that's going to be a big um, budget driver for us. Um, however, um, <coughs> there's new numbers, and now they might be down to like 11 or 12, and um, maybe we could do, do better than that. So that looks like a scary number, and it is going to change things. Um, but hopefully we can um, um, do better on that, and that's what we're looking for. I think the state health plan might be our way to go, and again, the numbers are coming in fast and furious, so hopefully we'll have that answer for you in the subsequent uh, budget workshop. 
contractual obligations, as I mentioned, with the union and the non-union employment contracts, and service contracts as well, like any leases we're having or, you know, any other equipment, you know, rentals or um, IT. There's a lot of IT um, contracts that we work with as far as licensing, et cetera. And all of those are contracts that we are literally in the middle of, even um, uniform contracts. So a lot of these contracts are things that can't be negotiated now. We have any time that we've come up with, you know, when it's time to come up to a contract, we definitely negotiate as best we can. But some of these things are, you know, contractual obligations that we, you know, that we have to, we have to honor. So um, market-driven increases, you know, we still have um, increases in propane, electricity, oil and water treatment, to name a few. Um, clearly not as much as it was last year, which is we're very grateful for. And again, like I said, with um, the inflation only at like 3, 3.1% this year, um, we are definitely in better shape. Um, and so some of, um, we do actually, for example, on our electricity, we do have a contract where we've, we've, we've got a cap on that. So that's a good thing. So there are, where we can, we have, um, you know, tried to keep the costs down as best we can, even though they're market driven with increases. So, but we do still have those and we still have to put gas in the car and heat the place and turn on the lights. So I'm sure the school board will say the same thing. So, but we still have those as far as budget drivers going. Um, additional challenges, capital projects such as roads, bridges, and infrastructure can't be ignored. Um, our roads are a mess. We're working on them. We're putting roads in, in good shape, but it's expensive. And then with the weather that we've been having, um, we've even done so, a new road and a culvert went. And so now, you know, we've got to pull that up and fix the culvert and put the road back. So um, these are very expensive. We have our Capital projects that we've been talking about, buildings that need to be addressed, particularly Firehouse 2, as we move closer to the design and final costs, they're just about there. So hopefully, again, within these budget um, conversations that we're going to have, the workshops, we'll be able to, you know, relay the costs and where we're at with that one. Revenue um, is still a challenge. Um, with the budget as presented, it doesn't include property taxes or use of grants. We envision that there will be greater discussion in regards to um, Grants, a lot of the different things that we're trying to put in place are we're trying to get things that are shovel ready so that we can, and a lot of the, the monies that we're using to get those things shovel ready, such as studies and plans and designs, will get us to a point where we can um, apply for grants and then we can actually leverage that. And that's that leverage dollar is coming from the ARPA funds. So we're trying to make those ARPA funds work now and in the future for us. So we're working on that and we can, we'll be talking about that again as we go through the budget workshops. So you'll hear more about ARPA funds and what we're doing. Um, some economic development opportunities. Here it is again, but the redevelopment agency is working on the East Town Village property. We're actually getting closer and closer. There might even be a, a meeting coming up, a public meeting about what plan is on the table for now. Um, there's a $200,000 grant that is funding the brownfield testing, and that should be commencing momentarily if it hasn't already started. And the TIF financing is being addressed right now with a consultant. The consultant is actually working on it. They've had um, stakeholder meetings, and now they're, um, you know, actually putting their basically design, you know, of the um, what this TIF financing can do for us and leverage that for the development that could happen down in the village. Um, our broadband committee, if you haven't seen them yet, there's some road signs out there, and now there's um, big, huge signs, and the one in front of the Grange looks like it got hit with a lot of wind, so it's not looking too healthy, but um, hopefully they can go back out and fix it when the storm is over, This, you know, the wind that from today is. But um, we are looking to, uh, you know, get more of the town um, on that as far as um, analyzing the buy-in and the cost. The more we have to buy in on this in the beginning, That'll keep the cost down, and then going out forward, obviously, as people start talking about the fact that now they have fiber and things are great, um, we'll get even more people buying in. But um, the more people we can get buying in, so please share that information to everybody in town and make sure that people are signing up. All you're signing up for is just to get information, just to get educated. And then um, I think once they get this initial um, you know, signage out and getting people signed up, I think we have close to almost 1,000 people signed up already, which is wonderful. So um, they're really doing a, a great job getting that, that word out. And then um, I imagine there'll be some more info um, meetings. But they might be even knocking on your door. So um, anyway, so there's a lot of outreach going on for that. And that I can only put us in a great spot for broadband. And then ARPA funding is, like I said, I talked a little bit about before that, you know, we're using this money to implement a master plan for MUDIS. Um, next week, we're actually, actually this week, we're interviewing a potential planning agency, and we look forward to sharing more with you guys 
um, and we'll, um, we'll do that in a subsequent workshop. Um, we have many capital needs and requests. A lot of them are, um, are um, big ticket items such as our roads. I think that's probably our, our biggest on, on the list. Um, the Board of Selectmen felt it more prudent to partner with the Board of Finance to review those capital needs and funding. We have, through the Long Range Capital Group, um, Board of Ed, Board of Finance, I mean, sorry, Board of Selectmen, we did rate the projects that are on the list so that you'll, you guys will be able to get a list that'll show all the capital projects that are slated or asked for for this year. And then in priority, as far as what, um, which ones are um, bubbled up to the top as being a priority item. And those happen because um, many different um, subsequent questions are asked about each project, whether it fits our plan of conservation, whether it's mandated, all, all kinds of different questions. And then the computer literally comes up with the ranking. So we don't necessarily rank it. We just answer a lot of questions to say, yes, we need it for public safety, or no, we don't, or we'd like it or we want it, or you know those kinds of things. So all of those questions are put into this matrix, and then it pops out where things should be on the priority list. And we don't even know what happens. It just goes in there and out spits the list. So well, obviously, with, with the help of our finance director, she does a little something over there. Uh, but anyways, um, so we'll, we can take a look at that as, again, as we go through the, uh, the capital needs with you guys. Um, because the ARPA fund allocations must be obligated by this end of December 2024, we do have about $240,000 of ARPA funds to complete um, many smaller projects that have been requested in the past but not funded. Most of these projects that we're talking about are either a one-time purchase of something. It doesn't obligate us to future operational costs <laughs> other than you know maybe, maybe maintaining something. Or um, it is something that we can use to... Um, leverage the money, like I mentioned, you know, getting studies done or getting plans done or designs done so that we can then go for the grants or go for bonding, et cetera, et cetera. So that's what we try have, have been doing with these ARPA funds. There's things in the schools, there's things in the town hall buildings, you know, the town's buildings that, um, you know, electrical panels and things like that that we haven't been able to access points, things like that that we haven't been able to get because we keep putting them off. It's a one-time purchase. Let's get it done. Use these funds because, again, if we don't use them, they go back. So we will definitely want to you know, make sure that we keep that on our list. Um, we look forward to working with you guys to review the capital in greater detail, especially in consideration of the various grants that are available to our community. And just a reminder, I want to remind the Board of Finance that there is a projected overpayment of taxes from 23-24 due to calendar deadline set the mill rate last year before 7-1. So we put that money aside. It's part of the revenue that will offset this year's budget. So we want to make sure that we remember that. And it's about a half a mil, um, provided it all gets collected. So it's, it's the collected amount. So I want to kind of remind the town as well, is, is that last year the dollar amount was X, whatever X was. But that's provided every X of those dollars get it collected from the tax. You know, And she does a pretty good job. Um, I don't know where she is this year yet. But she's generally in the very high 90s. I think last year was like 98.5% collected. So she gets about every dollar. But just so you know, it's not going to be exactly the number because we don't collect it. But whatever that number is, we have to make sure that it's subtracted from our taxes prior to the bills going out so that people understand that they are going to get that adjustment to this year's bill. So I just wanted to kind of remind you, keep you, you know, front of mind with that, um, with that little tidbit that that morsel still needs to be made sure and people need to know that it's there and we're going to use it this year to offset this year's budget. So it's stuff that they do in the columns and, you know, um, our finance director, will, um, Valerie, will explain how that's going to be done. But we want to make sure that we're very transparent with that, those dollars. And I just want to remind you guys. Um, so we look forward to the budget process and uh, open and welcome to uh, any Anybody who wants to come in, either an employee or board of commission members or the general public, please come in. We want you here. The first budget workshop with the Board of Finance is Saturday, 9 a.m. See you there. All set. All set. Thank you. You're welcome. <clears throat> so we said about a half a percent increase we're looking at. Do we know what those numbers look like at this point? It's all in your budget book, collectively. All right. I can get you the resolution from, what was it, Saturday before last. Okay. But 
what in your budget book you see a collaboration of all the departments and all the it was roughly fifteen million. When I get off the barco I can look up the resolution. I can take it for you. Okay. Um, but as we continue to deliberate on these pages and meet with departments, I'll get you guys summary pages. Yeah, or even if, um, while we move forward, would it be possible just to find whatever page we can um, call up quickly with that and uh, the figures on the grand list? Yeah, so... Um, I have information from the grand list and the resolution that the Board of Selectmen um, made. I don't want to put you on the spot. We can no, that's okay. It. I'm just looking through my... Here it is. Um, so this is the projected 23 grand list. The Board of Assessment Appeals are still even going through um, some of their meetings. So it, do you want to write it down? Yeah. We Does that work? It. Okay. Yeah. It is one billion, one hundred ninety-nine million, three hundred thirty-five thousand seven hundred and twenty. They don't allow us to round up, huh? <laughs> um, so that is a. As we talked about, point, it's only uh, about 2.2 million over last year. And I'm going to get you last year's number two. Let's see here. And just also thinking out loud, Valerie, I'm thinking, um, would it be possible at some point in the process just to get an idea of what the breakdown is between residential taxation and commercial? Taxation. I could talk to the tax collector just, about yeah, that. Just, I don't have that it. easily in my records, but of course, we no, will. Just thinking at some point. Maybe yeah. Week. That would be fantastic. Um, come on. All right. Well, you're doing that. Um, I mean, thank you. Uh, a couple of, I had a couple of quick questions. Sure. I just wanted to be sure. So I thought that the ARPA funds had to be expended at the end of last year. Is it? Was it a? I feel like they, they changed the. They did push it out a year okay. for allocation. It has to be spent by the end of 2026, but allocated by the end. I'm sorry, allocated by 24. The end of 24 spent by the end of 26. Yeah, and, so and it's as giving far you two as I years. know, that's always been the deadline from when they created it. So they have to be obligated. So they didn't push it out? I thought they pushed out something. Did they push out the spending of it? Uh, maybe they did. Um, maybe they did that because of supply chain. Yeah, so yeah. So it's liquidation by 2026, which means the money has to actually leave the building. But by December 24, we have to have purchase orders obligating the projects, obligating all the funds by December 31st, 2024. Okay. Which is really strange because we do everything on a fiscal year, and that's the only thing that's happening on a calendar year. <laughs> Um, okay, and so the final number on what was available, that's uh, 243? That is what's projected from the Board of Selectmen to utilize this year. Okay. Um, we will continue to, uh, c I have multiple spreadsheets to view the remaining balances. I think there's actually like uh, there might, yeah, available? I think there might be a little bit yeah. more, but that's because some of the stuff that we've purchased from last year came in less. So if we said we're going to purchase something for two hundred fifty thousand dollars, came out two hundred forty three, so it's seven seven thousand less. So that seven thousand goes back into the ARPA pile, so right. that we can obligate it somewhere else. So we'll be doing a lot of adjustments as we go, so that if we end up finding an extra $7,000 because we got to the end of a project and we had some leftover, similar to the way we do other projects around, capital projects. You know, there's still money left over from X that gets allocated somewhere else to another project or with this, with the ARPA, it can go back into the ARPA fund and then we can find another Yeah, I imagine something. as we continue the calendar year out, the Board of Finance and 
Board of Select are going to continue to see these projects and balances because we're using round numbers, right? Mm, we're saying something much. costs 40000 If it comes in at thirty eight, there's going to be $2,000 left over. And so we'll have to continue to devise plans on how to obligate those funds even into this next budget season. Okay. Because we, you just can't get it down to the penny every single time, you know? Sure. Are you, are you? Oh, I'm fine so far. I have the resolution uh, for the Board of Selectmen. It, um, I wonder if it would be easier if I printed this for you guys. I was going to say it's it just a big word thing. It's a big, yeah, yeah but the, the dollar amount is $15,476,740. And then I can also... Um, make sure you guys have a visual of this, of the actual motion. and how, It's also in the minutes. Um, they, they, they also mentioned authorizing some of these, these projects to, to ARPA, so, but we're going to continue to see this over and over again through the budget process and the budget season. So, I'm sorry to interrupt, but nowhere in this wonderful book do you have that I noticed that you have department by department mm -hmm. but nowhere here is there a, a is, is there, there a summary summary right now because as I understand that numbers continue to change through the workshops so I didn't It'd be good to know <laughs> okay okay I can get that for you guys and put it yes. in for Saturday yes I but from what I told saw from last year's budget workshops that was not given in the beginning of the process Okay. So I can get it for you guys on Saturday. Appreciate it. No problem. Okay. Um, I think my other immediate question is, do we know when we expect to have an, a number on the uh, health insurance renewals? Cindy, do you know when? No. So not. Joe is working on it right now. Our, our consultant is working on it right now. We had three companies come back to us, but they were all about the same rate as to where we were originally looking at. Um, he's reached out to two co-ops to see whether or not they would be willing to jump in. Haven't heard back from that. The state plan, we won't have an idea for that until he's, he's just started that process. So I'm thinking probably a week or two before we have an idea of what the state plan would come in at. Okay, but we expect to know in March? We do expect to know in March, yes. Yeah. That is the hope, to know that before the end of March. Okay, um, so at this point, I just want to go around real quick and see what we have for questions. Harvey, do you have anything at the moment? No, not at the moment. Okay. Um, Eric, how about yourself? Nothing. Maureen? I just had one question. Um, is the 19% incorporated in now, or is yes. so that 0.5% that increase? Could go away. Could go away or down. This 19 Correct. is built in. Okay. We, yeah, who knows? In. If they do well on the Found insurance, the we, could, we could deliver a budget under budget. Excellent. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> But let's wait. <laughs> wait. That's the number we had. On that one. <laughs> okay. Yeah, no, but I just But yes, it includes the 19. That's in there already. Yeah. Okay. It yeah. includes 19%. So we obviously want to do much better than that. Okay. Actually, to be perfectly honest, the 19 is the total for the entire plan. In the town, because people have come on and off, we're really at about 11. For the whole overall health budget. Right. For the town side. Okay. Now they have more employees at the DOE, so there's this. 19.86. Yeah. Okay. But it still does include the, that health plan and that cost. That estimate. Yeah. Okay. Thank yep. you. Thank you. I apologize. I wasn't trying to be rude. That was Todd I was talking to. So. Any questions uh, for him? Drop off for a minute there. Oh. Um, I think we're doing okay on time, so I was going to just hit you with a couple other quick okay, questions. Sure. I'll try. And I know we can always come back to it, but so just because it's one of the things that's giving me nightmares trying to figure out how we're going to do it. So uh, I feel like 
with the with firehouse two, it was two years ago that they said it was an immediate need and an immediate danger. And I and believe me, the whole reason I ever wanted to get started in politics at all was because of how ridiculous I think bureaucracy is and how foolish I was to ever think I could have any influence on that. But uh, with that said, <laughs> well, where are we realistically here? I mean, is the roof going to fall in and kill our brave firemen and women, or what? No, well, they're really fast on their feet, so they'll be good. <laughs> um, I hope so. So where we are now is um, we actually have um, just received um, a couple of initial plans. Um, the plans are for somewhere in the neighborhood, and I, you're catching me off guard. If I had the plans right in front of me, I could tell you exactly. It's 12,642 feet. But somewhere in the neighborhood of 12,000, 13,000 square feet. The um, original plan, I think, was somewhere around they wanted 18. So. As far as designing a building, you can't just sit there and go, okay, put up four walls and move the trucks. Um, you know, they, they had a conversation, very many conversations with the fire department as far as what they needed, what they wanted, what they'd love, what they, you know, can have, what they can't live without, et cetera, et cetera. There's new safety things that we have to do. The building we currently have is not up to the today's code, so there's code things that we have to address. So all of those things were looked at. Then what they looked at, and they basically made a, you know, here's our list. This is what we want. And then we said, okay, which of these are mandatory <laughs> and which of these can we go away with? So, you know, 18 got shaved down to 12. They're all 13, somewhere in that neighborhood. Um, there have been other projects that this particular firm who's designing this have done. One's in Canton, one's in, uh, I forget where the other one is, Bristol, I think. Um, and we looked at those buildings to see what those look like, et cetera, et cetera. So this is the process. You can't just put up four walls and hope that it's OK. So it does take a lot of consultation back and forth, what we can do, what we can't do. We're also looking at, you know, do we put up a prefab building like what's there and that what we've lived with already with a good foundation on it, which is what we did out here on our garage here. Do we put up a frame building? Do we put up a concrete building? You know, what, what are the pluses and minuses to all of that? So we've looked at all of that to try and determine which is the way to go. Um, at this point, they've come back with, again, a couple of designs. We're trying to remember the number. And I hate to say it out loud because people are going to be like, oh, she said it was going to cost this. And then it's not that. But like I said, if you can just give me like a week, um, I can come back with that. But literally, that's what it's taken. And then now we've kind of said to them, I think we're good with what you've given us. We're going to check with the fire department, make sure the fire department's OK with it. Then we'll go back to them and say, OK, we're good. Pull the trigger. Go design it. Then they have to design it. So we have a project number, OK, and we have what we need. And I've gone to the state bonding and filled out the bond form to see if we can get on the bonding list. And maybe we can get some of the money through bonding with, through the state, um, trying desperately to get whatever, you know, whatever dollars we can that we don't have to pay for it through taxation. Um, we might end up having to bond it here as well, you know, for what we can get there. So um, as soon as we get that number, as soon as we get the design, obviously we will share it with everybody so everybody can see that here's the firehouse, this is what we want to build, how are you guys okay with this, this is how we're, we see, we can think we can pay for it, and then we'll go from there. But yeah, it does take a while. I mean, believe me, I'm, I'm the least patient person in the room. I want these things to happen now. Um, but it does, it takes, it takes forever. So. We are still on high alert with the building, just like we were two years ago. Um, you know, if we get a really bad windstorm, we get heavy snow, we're emptying the public works garage, the apparatus is going in public works garage, and then the dump trucks are outside until the storm's over. So that's where we're at. We're still there. And um, we're, we did do um, a, a slight repair to one of the base of the columns on the building to keep it up. And we're hoping that you know that little band-aid is going to fix it for now. Um, but um, we um, we feel that the building's safe enough to keep them still working out of there. But again, if we have a weather event that we need to move, we will move. Did that answer the question? Yeah. Um, right. So I didn't mean to put you on the spot as far as the dollar amount because I know that there's a lot of stuff that's. Uh, that comes into play with that. But I, I guess I'm just curious, do we expect to break ground on a new building within the next year, or how close are we even to? I think we're probably a month away from the design. Mm -hmm. 
And then I think we obviously have to bring it back to us, you know, the Board of Selectmen, the Board of Finance, you have to look at it. We have to have a public hearing about it, you know, so everybody can take a look at it. Everybody's comfortable with it. I think it has to pass. We have to go through the, so could we break ground this fall? Possibly. The reason I'm asking is just not to stick a thumb in your eye. I know that's a really ugly uh, process there. And, and But just as we're looking at capital expenditures and trying to get an idea of what we're going to bond in the future, I was just hoping to kind of have an idea of what we're looking at. So, so it could be this year. It could continue to push out a bit. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I, w I would love to see it done, you know, start breaking ground this the end of this year. But these things do take time, as you, as you mentioned. Um, great, thank you. That was that was the other one that was really yeah, giving me fits. Um, okay, so we're doing okay on time. Um, anybody have anything that they want to address <coughs> in the selectmen's budget right now before we move on? Are we good? Okay. Very good. Harvey. Yeah, I'm. I'm basically good. Um, I don't. Nobody wants to hold you to a number on the firehouse, but we would like to hold you to a target date for having a number. Yeah, I mean, I certainly can come to you. I can guarantee you I will have a number before you have to put a budget out there for a referendum. So you'll okay. definitely have that Thank number before okay. that. Yeah. Good enough. Yeah, okay. for sure. I, I mean, it could be a couple of weeks, but I don't okay. want to push it. Depends on how long the fire department looks at it. <laughs> they might take a while. No, they should be fine. They want it, obviously, as bad as everybody else. So, But yeah, I can definitely have it before the referendum. Well, before we have to actually. I will have it for your consideration before okay. you have to put together a resolution because for the. How big that is will impact how many capital projects, other capital projects we can look at. Right. Gotcha. Thank you. Okay. Um, fantastic. Thank you very much. All right. You're welcome. So at this point, I think we can move along here. Uh, Dr. Brito, thank you for being with us, and thank you for thank you, Ira. sitting through our First budget process with us here. So, um, are you prepared to present? I am prepared to present. Wonderful. Thank you for the opportunity. So, I'm going to present the Board of Education budget, the proposed budget um, that they adopted for fiscal year up 2025, and want to reiterate um, the board's priorities. Of course, safety. Um, well-being of everyone, um, commitment to students and families of educational opportunities, um, also the well-being and care of staff, and that learning and well-being go together. Uh, we also are committed to field experiences beyond the classroom, uh, in addition to activities and athletics, and a current commitment to making sure we adhere to state mandates and accreditation. So that just sets the tone for the Board of Ed uh, commitments. Do want to share the contractual obligations. Um, these are in place. So employee contracts do range from 2.5% to 3% increases. Medical insurance, as you heard, did come in um, just under 20% increase. And as you know, our agent is out there working very hard to see if there is a better um, option. Maintenance agreements are between 5 and 5.5% 5 and increase. Tuition for um, students who have outplacements is just over 55% increase. And daily pr uh, transportation contract is 3.6% increase. So you see the total increase of contractual obligations there. Wanted to share new requests. The NEAS accreditation process um, is starting, and we do ease into it. It's $2,500 request. 
um, because there is a lot of preparation that has to be done at the high school for that visit. There was a request for two Promethean boards for math classes. There was a request for before school enrichment at the elementary level. There was also a request for us to pay for SAT fall testing for seniors. This is a request that came from students. Second step is a program that we utilize at the elementary level and would be appropriate for middle school because we do have the younger ages there as well. It's basically about social emotional learning and what you may have heard in the past referred to as character counts. But to really help students self-regulate and so that they can attend to studies. Uh, another requirement is a menstrual equity legislation. So we are um, putting those menstrual products free to students in bathrooms. There is a required reading legislation where we do have to adopt a program that the state approved. There was an attempt to um, request waiver from the state. It was not um, fully approved, so we are currently researching and looking at various programs. And there was a request for the baseball cage um, at the high school. In addition, there were new staffing requests. Full-time special education teacher at the elementary school. Increase the social worker um, four-tenths of an FTE at the elementary school. Add family consumer science, full-time teacher. The program does not exist at the middle school. They have a beautiful classroom. It did exist at one time, but had been cut. Two paraprofessionals at the middle school and uh, to hire our own athletic trainer um, for the high school, and we would try to share um, events if possible with the middle level. Those are all new staffing requests. Um, reductions. Mm. All staffing requests were removed. So not one of those was added into the new budget. In addition, we looked at field trip requests and also cut just over $20,000. One math Promethean board was cut. The baseball cage was cut. The reading materials, we completely removed it. We're hoping to be able to um, do that through some grant funding. The VEX kits for robotics at the middle school were all completely cut, also looking to fund that through a grant. Additional cuts in the areas of media or furniture or carpeting requests, just over $26,000 and a cut in special education tuition and transportation um, of $165,546. So these are all reductions. From what was requested? From requested. From staff and yes. administration requests. OK. Yes. yes. Thank you. Historical increases. Wanted to share um, the budget percentage increases over the past seven years and really look at an anticipated seven-year average if we do have a 6.34% increase for the coming year. Where we were before reductions, we were just over a 9% increase. With all of the reductions, we're coming in at a 6.34% for the operational side of the Board of Ed budget. The seven-year average would be 2.95%. In addition, wanted to share um, how the pie breaks out and really looking at all the percentages that are in the budget. You can see salaries and benefits, as would be expected, um, are 77% of the overall Board of Ed budget. Capital requests, so I'm, I'm shifting now to capital. Um, and these are categorized by location initially, so the um, elementary school and the middle school. Requests for K-1 playground equipment, 
a new kitchen line at the elementary school, um, interior pre-K playground, um, the asphalt is coming apart. It's bumpy. It's really not safe. It's a tripping hazard. Looking to update that with concrete that I'm told will last forever um, at the tune of $82,000. Um, at the middle <coughs> level, we're looking um, for the, this is for a focus on safety to make sure that the exterior in compliance with ADA, that there are horn and strobes um, for any type of alarm that's necessary out there, and that's $10,000. Exterior power washing and sealing at the middle school. Um, we do portions of the schools and rotate through, and this is for the middle school, and it is $25,000. Uh, the hot water heaters at the middle school are in dire need of replacement. And we're actually holding our breath on this, trying to um, anticipate when they might um, fail, because they're already failing, and we're doing some Band-Aids um, to sustain um, the water heaters. At the middle school, also looking to replace tile in the main hallways um, as a tile they're lifting up, those tiles are lifting up, and the middle school um, office carpet would be $25,000. That's another request. Continuing with capital requests at the high school, um, ceiling tiles, um, this is ongoing. It's a slow replacement. We had tiles with um, stains and um, water damage, so they're starting to sag. Um, fiber for the new tech building, that request um, is coming in at $15,000. want to make sure that you're aware that we are also seeking grant funding from the Ray Board, and so if that does come through, then that amount would come off. Field house roof, now this is the old portion of the roof. It did not get done um, with the complex project, the athletic complex project. In addition, looking for a gator for track um, maintenance, and that's 15,000. Hot water tank, 100,000. Initially, we thought it was going to be 200,000, but it did uh, come in at 100,000. Stage lighting, a cost of $150,000. We are waiting on Eversource to affirm and validate that they'll be able to <coughs> include those updates, and then that amount would also be re a reduction. I uh, want you to know <coughs> that I was there for that site visit with Eversource, and um, they didn't realize that that location is actually used for instruction. We do not have enough space for the music program <coughs> at the high school, <coughs> so every space is used for instruction, and class happens on stage. So that actually changed their perspective, but we just want to get this in writing that they will actually um, update the lighting. At the track, we do need fiber for the internet, and that is $17,000. Um, the courtyard, there's a request <coughs> to update the courtyard at the high school for $25,000, and there's a request for soccer team seating that has um, a cover. Uh, you know, to cover for weather conditions, and that's coming in at 35000 Continuing, um, looking at system-wide, looking to increase wireless access points throughout the district and <coughs> town, and that's $40,000. Uh, cafeteria equipment, this is regular um, every year, 25000 because equipment breaks down, and so we want to be ready to uh, order new equipment. Carpet and flooring in classrooms, <coughs> this is ongoing replacement, $20,000. The duct cleaning is mandated. Um, looking to have this done in the summer. This is for middle school and high school. Field improvements, um, mostly at the high school and middle school, and you know a lot of prep work, prep work that is coming in at $18,000. The gymnasium floors, uh, this is a three-year cycle. We already had $25,000 set aside. It is $50,000, and we are doing the middle school 
uh, this year. The indoor air quality inspections, these are mandated, um, $38,000 for middle school and high school. Interior building swipe key system, and that is um, specifically because we have to redo the doorknobs to be ADA compliant. We have just the round ones. Um, and so we'll take the opportunity and rather than have to re-key doors, and when keys get lost, that's also expensive, coming up with a system where it's a swipe. And if there was ever an emergency, um, you can imagine if you're trying to get to the right key to put it through the doorknob, this would be <coughs> much quicker access um, to interior classrooms. And we'd start with the elementary. Interior painting ongoing, that's 15000 um, a request for a maintenance truck with plow, um, and this is part one this year, 30000 and then we would continue and um, put money aside next year as well. Still continue with system-wide, modernization of learning environments, new furniture, um, and that's coming in at a $100,000 request. Padding on the basketball poles, um, kids climb those. And they don't necessarily um, look where they're going and could be running full speed. We did have a student have a serious injury, um, and so we definitely want to pad those. Um, a request for radios, $10,000. Mandatory radon testing is $12,000. Um, security cameras, looking to um, add in stairwells and starting with middle school, that's $15,000. Looking to provide better um, temperature at the middle school and high school with air conditioners for $35,000. A request for Ventrex riding snowblower. Looking at a potential lease of $25,000. And we're in need of a zero turn mower for $18,000. Want to talk about reductions. You've heard all the requests. The modernization of classrooms has been reduced by 50%, so that's a $50,000 reduction. Office carpet for the middle school, we removed that $25,000. We're prioritizing with the high school. To update the courtyard for the high school, we removed that $25,000. Um, we also removed the request for the soccer team seating that came in um, at $35,000. That's an additional reduction. The last two listed here are ones that I talked about that are not confirmed at this point. The stage lighting, we're waiting for Eversource, and the grant funding, we're waiting when the timing is to present to um, the Ray Board. And that would be an additional $165,000 reduction should those two be confirmed. Wanted to share, compared to last year's capital budget, um, the decrease. And um, this nice graph that Finney put together, which I really appreciate, shows the, shows the <laughs> purple. Um, education is contributing 30% 30, 30 to overall capital budget. And really appreciate this opportunity and happy to answer questions. Let's start with the unfair question again. What, um, our actual percentage increase over last year, we have that. So. 6.34 for the Board of Ed operational side. Okay. That's what that Already? slide demonstrated. Okay. And a reduction of 76% for the capital side. It was over $5 million last year, and I can tell you what it is now. It's $1,220,244 compared to $5,236,150. Thank you. You're welcome. And thank you for um, 
including the, the requests and the, the, the reductions? Well, we wanted you to see that the requests are important. And we know we want to be responsible, and we definitely don't want to be out of touch with the community. And so we're trying to balance services for children and families and the needs of the town, because we're all in this together. Absolutely. And it's, no, it's fantastic, because when people ask us what's actually been cut, we can bring it back to first step in the process here. So I know I appreciate it. Um, Wonderful. I have a couple of questions, but again, I don't want to monopolize things. Uh, just do a quick uh, check-in. Harvey, you got anything at the moment? Not at the moment. Eric? Um, <clears throat> I do, actually. Um, <clears throat> a second step program. Yes. 2500 Yes. What is that? It's, it actually provides the resources and materials to help the classroom teacher de deliver the lessons. Okay. So they base it on research that they've done, and it really is about how to self-regulate, how kids can be productive in school, and how do they <coughs> handle disappointment, how do they handle frustration, what are some things that we could model together. It does start for the younger kids, and it's mm -hmm. really a very good program, typically Elementary schools that go till fifth grade have it through fifth grade. Our middle level starts at fourth. It really does make sense to continue that instruction at the middle level. Okay, so every student has the opportunity. Every student yeah. participates. <clears throat> yes. Yes. Right. Right. Um, <clears throat> the menstrual equity legislation. Yes. So that's the... I believe the last time we met with the tri board yes. meeting, that's the uh, tampon dispensers. Yes, so we have to provide in all um, labeled female bathrooms those products. They were never in there potentially before, or if they were, <coughs> they might have had a cost. Okay. So this now is free and a designated um, identified male bathroom at all three schools beginning in third grade. Okay. Has there been any thought, and I'm saying this because really I'm a guy. <laughs> um, this has already hit the student population and um, I think a concern with, as a parent, um, I have a son and a daughter, both in the high school. Um, having a member of the opposite set going into another bathroom. I think Ms. Watley brought that up last time. Um, <clears throat> I've talked to my two, and um, they really could care less about it. But at the same time, there are parents out there that I think would be concerned with it. Um, is this a mandate? Yes, it's it a is. law. And what I can say is, because people have inquired mm -hmm. of their own kids, is this happening? Do you see this happening? Because this is not advocating for it to happen. This is right. just compliance mm -hmm. with providing the products there. Okay. And we are not getting any information at all that that has happened. Okay. However, the law does allow the opportunity should a student decide to go into a bathroom where their biological needs don't meet what's in that bathroom, if you will. Sure, I understand. Okay. Um, the internet at the, so the new soccer field, what's the purpose for that? So we could do live streaming. You know, it's really important to, to be able to access while you're there and public isn't able to access and we're not able to do some things we'd like to do as well. Okay. And then the last thing I have, um, we'll just kind of lump it all into one. Um, the maintenance truck with the plow, the mower and the snowblower. The public works, do they take care of that currently? I don't believe so, but Don is here. I, I They don't. They do not. We do all the school maintenance staff that does all this 
near sidewalks. Okay. And uh, the plow for the truck would be replacing the one we have. Okay. So go around and we'll clean around the sidewalks and pull the doors and bring them in. Okay. And a snow blower has been replaced, and replaced the one that left Ellis Elementary. Okay. We have one per school. Yep. And they, they do it one that's assigned to each school and they do it. I just wanted to touch on something Eric said about the um, menstrual equity. The, the products aren't so much of a concern. Is there anything in the budget for like increasing security or, or is it just sort of the wait? Cameras, right? we're, we're looking to add yeah. more cameras. Because I know you mentioned that um, you know the kids are saying it's not happening now. You're not getting any feedback now. So I didn't know if the What's the plan, or is the plan just to wait till something happens and then, and then address it as on an as basis, or is there a proactive plan to deal with potentially issues surrounding that? So I've been here a short time, and what I can say is the students aren't students that seek problems. Students in this district really are pretty respectful towards each other, and. I don't anticipate a problem at all. And anyone can go to the nurse's office if they wanted to. The only reason it's going into those locations is because the legislation requires us to do that. This is not East Haddam doing it right. on their own. Right. Um, so there's cameras in the yes, hallways? Or there's something? cameras in the hallways, and we're looking to increase the amount of but cameras. Obviously, there's no cameras in the bathrooms. No, obviously not. Right. So there's really, there's no, there's no like security in there's the There's really no, at this time, there's no reason to heighten well, that security. Unfortunately, though, when something happens, then you're kind of, it's too late then to yeah. it'll be proactive with this, but okay. Anything? Good? I'm good. Rebecca? Yeah, I got a few questions. <clears throat> I apologize for getting here late. I was working in Hartford. Um, so first question I have is the stage lighting. Um, yes. It is budgeted at $150,000, yes. correct? Yes. I remember this came up last year, and I was just actually flipping through my notes because I knew I wrote something down about this in the prior year. So I have in my notes back in March of 2023 that we were going to set aside $100,000 for fiscal year 24, which is this current year offset the stage lighting costs. So I'm not sure if that remained or it, it got cut. It got cut. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um so so it's at hundred and fifty thousand. I could have sworn it was a lot higher last year. I'm not complaining about that, but I'm just kind of questioning at the same time. I could be wrong. Don might have something to to <laughs> contribute here, Don. It was it was higher. Yeah. We, we had someone else come in. Lower price, and we're almost 100% convinced that it's going to get put in a LED upgrade. So, uh, I think next week, anyway, we probably have to pay for it. Okay, <clears throat> could you clarify what we're waiting on Eversource for with the stage lighting? The commitment that it will cover this initiative to update all the lighting. So they went around the school looking at where what areas would be included, and that's that was not initially thought of as a learning environment until we were able to say no. Instruction actually does happen on the stage, and then they like they reconsidered, and that's where we're waiting on confirmation that they'll do it. So in light of this confirmation, does that mean if, if they, if they being ever source, if they have a different opinion, could that cause the cost to either increase or decrease? Yes, if they did not know that was a learning location, it doesn't look like your typical classroom, yes, they would say this is not covered, this is just for performances, this is not where instruction happens. So and when are we going to hear back from ever source? Within a week, I expect, is what Don was saying. Thought we'd have it back by now, but it's still in Yeah. Okay, so we they're not waiting on us for anything. We're waiting on them. Okay, that's good. Um, I also had the same question as Eric. Why do we need internet with tracks? So it's for 
live streaming for games? Mm -hmm. Do they live stream games right now? In the gym. Right now they do gym. They don't live stream down there. They've had some uh, students some years try to get stuff down there to do some live streaming, but it's it's quite the process. So it's not just live streaming. It's also to film the game, uh, the practices, so that they have film for practices. So they can see what they do and what they don't do. Um, and then it's also for Wi-Fi for not only the team but the people down there. Um, and it's also for point of sale. So that if we do sell concessions, they will have the ability to do point of sale uh, transactions through like a, a square. Um, next one is the menstrual equity law. I have a lot of questions on this. Um, first one is, have we given any consideration to additional funding for plumbing costs? Because you're, well, we put up signs that you're not to flush them. Has anyone seen Brook? Is it Brook? Yes, it was on the news. I, re I remember yeah, hearing I'm about it. I'm yeah. concerned about plumbing. I mean, if there's signs, people don't care. You know, and that's one of my big concerns. Well, I have a lot of concerns about this. So plumbing's one of them. Um, I could just, you know, we could sit here and make up situations till the cows come home. But I imagine that these products are going to be abused. Um, probably my hair going to be thrown in the toilet if I had to guess. So that's a concern I have is plumbing. Um, I have a huge issue with, and I understand this is a mandate, but I just have to say this. I have an incredibly huge issue with this. Um, I have a nine-year-old daughter, and I am not comfortable with her having males um, share a bathroom with her at all. Um, there was an issue with this that made nationwide news where a girl was raped. And um, I'm here to fight for my children. And this is unacceptable. Um, again, I'm not directing this at you. I understand this is a mandate. Um, but I just want to say I have a huge issue with this, and I encourage parents to speak up on this because I can't be the only one. Um, something can happen very quickly, and there's cameras. But, you know, camera's not, like Maureen said, camera's not going to stop something from happening. It might be detected later on, but I have a problem with this, and I just have to speak up on this. Um, I've already spoken to my children about this, and they will probably be utilizing the nurse's office to use the bathroom, which is extremely frustrating because, you know, why should we go out of our way to... Um, if the nurse's office is on the other side of the school, my daughter's going to have to go all the way down there. And I think this is ridiculous. Um, and a disruption to the day for these students who prefer not to share a bathroom with the opposite gender. Um, so I have to speak upon that. Um, and I, again, I just ask <coughs> any of the parents to speak up on this. It's the appropriate individual. Um, my next question, moving on to another topic, is the social emotional learning. Mm -hmm. um, is this a mandate? No. Okay. No, no. This is the administrators are seeking to continue that instruction from elementary into the middle level. Okay. So, approximately, how much are we spending on the social emotional learning? This is twenty five hundred dollars to get the materials. Okay. Yeah. Um, Again, I have some issues with this as well. Um, I find that this is starting to infringe upon uh, families' roles and responsibilities, the rights of parents to um, appropriately raise their children. Um, I personally spend a lot of time with my children addressing these particular needs, and I think it's a little unacceptable for the school to be step stepping into this role, um, to be parenting our children. Um, so I have a lot of issues with this, and I'm not in support of it at all. I know it's not a lot of money, but again, this is another thing where I feel a need to speak out on respectfully that I don't agree. Um, I did a little research on it. Not a fan. Not cool. So I'm not in support of that. Um, so right now, is it in the elementary school? Yes. But it's going to be in the middle school Correct. as well? Correct. And then what about the high school? No. No, it's for the younger students because it's what used to be called similarly character counts where you're talking about how you develop respect, how you're responsible, those types of characteristics. I know social-emotional learning, we hear a lot all the time since COVID, 
but it really does remind me of things we were doing decades ago about building character. Um, so, but it is not a program for, for the older. They don't have that. See, that all sounds like things that parents should be doing with their children. Absolutely, that's absolutely. That's issue with it. And, you know, I have a way I want to raise my own children. I think that's beyond the bounds of the school system's responsibilities. And I think it's unfair for taxpayers to bear the burden of something that, quite honestly, should be taken care of at home. Um, and um, I had one more question on that, and it flew out of my head. Um, the 2500 is that to just increase from the elementary school to the middle school? Correct. So how much are we spending right now at the middle school? The same amount? No, it was not there. We don't have it. No, I'm sorry, the elementary school. So the 2500 is for the middle school, correct? So what are we spending at the elementary school for social emotional I don't know care? if you have that at your fingertips. She's looking, she's looking up that vendor. And, and just keep in mind, um, it, it's not to be perceived as competition with parents. It's how to develop norms in a classroom when you do have 20 students in there and how do the students interact with each other and build their capacity in that setting. It's not intended to challenge what happens at home at all or somehow conflict with what's being taught at home. Well, I, you know, I did some research on it and I, I still disagree. <clears throat> I don't think it's something that is appropriate. Um, one more question. Can parents opt out as a meeting will social emotional learning? It's something we do with the whole classroom. We've never had an opt out option because it's how kids interact with each other. So we've never had that. The kids would miss out if they don't know the norms that are being developed and now you're gonna pull them out and pull them back in and they don't have a reference of how that happened in the classroom. Okay. Those are all the questions I have. Thank, Thank you. you. <clears throat> all right, I wanted to follow up on a couple of things real quick. Sorry to make you go back to the state. Again. Just, no worries. But this has just been driving me crazy. For Don can come right up here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I just, I, I think I'm, I was missing something. So uh, it sounds like, so Eversource has a program on updating the lighting. Updating the lighting. So, so they're absorbing the lion's yes. share of the expense, yes. uh, possibly, if yes. they approve. Okay. Okay, just wanted to clarify that for my own uh, uh, edification here. Thank you. Uh, well, that's that's great. We need to keep our fingers crossed that that goes through smoothly. Um, my other two questions was we discussed earlier, and I know that um, discussed individually or in other groups um, numerous times going into this season that we are trying to be as transparent as possible. So I was trying to get a little bit more information uh, just so that we can communicate it when it comes up uh, during tax season here. Um, so my first question was, can you speak a little bit to the, uh, the tuition increase for special education? Now, my understanding is very basic. I think, Patty, you and I had talked about it a little bit. Um, that's a state removed funding from of the excess costs. Is, is that? Only 70%, right? right. Am I thinking of the right thing? It, it all goes in the same conversation, yes. So could somebody just, I, I guess basically, maybe I'm making this more complicated than it has to be, but um, what do you guys mind speaking to the, uh, just to the increase itself? Yeah. And I know I mean, we have no control <laughs> over it, but just, just curious about how that. So the overall increase of special education? Yes. So the tuition for this year, or looking into next year, um, there was an increase up to about 55%. We actually ended up having one student that was not needing to be out of place, so that is why it went back down. So now our total increase, I think, is 49%. Um, there is an effect of that of the, ex um, of the excess costs. We usually were at 75 to 80%. We're down to 70%. In fiscal year 25, we're expecting that to be only 68% reimbursement. Um, and that's a weird calculation as to it's not directly 68% of what we pay out. There's some strange things that the state makes you do. Um, Mr. Martin, our director of pre services, is better to explain everything that's in there. But there's no padding, per se, in our special education costs, tuitions. It is 
threat we have right now for students or that we know we will have for students in what facilities that they might possibly be needing or what programs they need. So also included in special education tuition is a program that we have at the middle school that's called um, ESS is what it stands for. Now it's completely escaping what it means. Um, but basically that is a program where we have the ability to take up to 10 students that could possibly be on the fringe of maybe needing a little bit more, maybe even thinking about being out for this, but we're able to keep them within the school system. Um, so the cost of that is actually within our tuition as well. Um, and then in addition to that, um, special education transportation is an increase as well um, because we do have to transport the students. Um, and many times those um, outplacements have longer school years than we do here. So we might be 180 days, whereas a lot of those schools are 190, 95, and they have summer school as well. So, um, but it is based on our current enrollment. Um, there is always a possibility of that enrollment changing in a, in a flash. So we could lose a student that moves out and we could gain a student that moves in and we would have no control. So we, you know, over the years have had students walk in the door mid-year that have already been placed someplace and now all of a sudden we're picking up the tab. So it's, it's kind of a flow, it's kind of an ebb and flow, but this is based on what we know today. And that is based on the tuition rates of these schools that are not regulated, by the way. They're regulated, but they're not. Their tuition's not. So it reflects what's currently happening, and it could very widely. It could very widely go either way. I have to tell you, we haven't gotten it widely go the other way in a long time. Um, we were, there was one student that, that with the program that we have at the, element, at the middle school, um, we were able to keep them within the school. So that's why there was a change in transportation and tuition on that end. <laughs> so again, I'm, I'm repeating myself here. Um, it's only so it sinks in through my thick Swedish skull here. Um, combination of the in-house expenses, the outplacement expenses, the reduction of funding from the state, and the transportation. Is that um, loosely... Loosely. It's that when you say in-house expenses, we're not talking special education teachers or anything. Those are actually budgeted throughout each one of the individual schools. The only in-house expense that's on there is the one that one specialized program that we have right now at the middle school, um, which is an ESS program that's been very successful over there. So, Joe, so I might be able. To, I'm sorry. Oh, sorry. Sorry. I was just going to say I might be able to help <coughs> provide some clarification on the ECS funding. Okay. Not ECS, but the excess costs. Excess costs, yes. They use the same acronym for both, right? Um, I had to explain all this to previous boards in, in other towns. So um, the state gives disturbance of threshold of per pupil cost based on when these guys file their um, EFS, which is like an education financial system. And they say, uh, student costs, I don't know what your numbers are, but $20,000. So um, the excess cost determines a threshold of four and a half times that student cost, right? So four and a half times um, 20,000, right? Um, and then now your student has tuition of 100,000, right? Your outplaced student. Um, and if the difference, is, you know, let's say your four and a half times is ninety thousand. I'm just using really rough numbers. You're only going to get the sixty-three percent or seventy percent of the ten. of the ten because they've determined the threshold is four and a half times the cost of a student. So anything that's over that, they provide grant funding for, but it's based on appropriation. So if larger cities suck up a lot of dollars and um, there's no money at the end of the day in the pot, then you get the percent that you get. So there's a lot of legislation trying to rewrite the calculation, much like the excess or the ECS, ECS funding. <laughs> They're both the same acronym. It's awful. And so you just get the 63% or 70 or whatever's left in the pot of that amount over the threshold over the four and a half times cost and the, the student. current legislation right now has done a reset. So we actually, 
some districts they said got overpaid and some districts got underpaid and for whatever reason they thought we got overpaid that's on the ECS on the education cost side well yeah. it affected your ECS based on our excess costs so yeah. it actually ended up hitting our town excess costs only $35,000 but still it's $35,000 less that you're getting in ECS based on what they thought they overpaid us for excess costs and so now they've lowered it so we were at 80% this year we're at 70% and we believe we'll be at 68% for excess costs not ECS <coughs> for the 25 school year and then in the 24 school year we have the ECS got knocked by $30,000 and we expect that to happen again in the 25 fiscal year to get knocked again by another $35,000 it's the state. That's all I can say. And it's, it's very confusing. Very confusing. <laughs> and I don't know if I helped at all, but. <laughs> no, that's very helpful. I appreciate it. Because then, you know, cause it's a scary number when you see it in a slide, right? So if somebody asks about it, it's, it's helpful to be able to. Yeah. It, it's one of our so, mandated expenses sure. that we have no choice. And again, it's very fluid. If somebody moves in tomorrow, it blows it up. Okay. So, excuse me, Joyce. I sure. Follow up question. I just want to make sure I understand. Are you, is is that is the number in the budget now based on the actual students, or you said something about estimating students? Is it just no, the no? No, no. There is no estimation. This is based on actuals. The actual students now know actual, projected. Actual, okay, I wasn't quite sure from what you said. Yep, okay. actual tuition for the twenty five fiscal year based on our current student base. Okay. So as long as nobody else moves in, okay, we're good. But if somebody moves out, sure, we're good too. So I mean, but it it is based on our actual. There is no percentage increase made up number in there it's all actual numbers thank you so my only other question at this point was um feedback on that are there any came up at the end of last year and i think it's helpful to know what we're up against um are there any other unfunded state mandates that you guys are currently dealing with that are a real headache and again, not to put anybody on the spot, but it's just helpful to be able to get that information out in our process here. Yeah, about 160 of them. There's currently about 160 unfunded mandates in the state of Connecticut for elementary or for. You can hide anything. Everything's included. We're absorbing everything. Yes. There aren't any surprises that we know of. Now, this legislative session is not over yet. <laughs> and. It has been known to create some surprises overnight that we need to do by July 1. We won't know that just yet, but we've accounted for everything at this point. Fantastic. I appreciate it. Um, anybody else have anything? I do. I do. On the okay. second thought, I do. <laughs> Please. Um, I see. More than one Board of Ed member here listening attentively. Very good. The question I have is you had requests, proposals, whatever, um, for some additional staffing and additional programs, which the, you and the Board have decided were unnecessary. We didn't need to do. I guess the question I'm asking is, um, in every, in all of your opinions, we're not throwing the baby out with the bathwater, right? We're not deciding we're not going to do this just because we want to pinch our pennies as tight as we can, and we know this is going to come back and bite us ten years from now when some young lady gets married and can't cook or whatever. <laughs> um. So I asked him if you got second thoughts on this. The culinary arts would <coughs> be valuable to every individual. Um, it certainly would to me. It, it would be to you, right? I agree. So it's not something that currently exists. So we're not um, cutting a person's job. We're not removing the no, program. So it's not that we said we didn't need it, and we're not throwing out the baby with the bathwater, per se. These were new requests. That would be one of the top ones that absolutely I wish we could support. But when the budget was over 
and to say, oh, we're going to put this, like all the new requests were important. So it, it was hard. It was very hard to decide not to put it through. Do I think it's valuable? Absolutely. Do I think kids would thrive and thoroughly enjoy being in a culinary arts program? Absolutely. Okay, but the basis of my question is, you decided to make some, to turn down some requests. Correct. Correct. And it's the collective wisdom of the board and the administration that you're, you're not, you're happy. We're not yeah. happy, yeah. but you're, you're willing to go with this. In I light think, of what happened say that, last year. Yeah, in light of what happened last year, I think if I can be for the, I, I think we're very nervous to come forward with the dollar figures. And you could see, if I could backtrack to what some of the things that you're talking about right now, like we'll just say for special education, tuition, and transportation, that's a huge number. If you look at the dollar wise, huge percentage too. And that's something that we can't, going back to your educational cost sharing, that's something that we're seeing an increase. The whole state is seeing an increase in these special education numbers, huge increases. And like a town of East Haddam is seeing a reduction in what the state is reimbursing. So I think we are looking at numbers like that. And in essence, too, to save jobs, because we don't want to come to the MAYAC referendum, give you this, we're presenting another bare bones budget. Doesn't look like it, but it is we went through every dollar figure, every line item, and uh, of course we'd want that. If you guys want to add it back in, add it back in for the middle school culinary. I think they'd really enjoy it. There's no cost on, there's a cost on the teacher and benefits. There, we have the space. That's the newest school. There's the classrooms there. It's, it's, and it's not being utilized because there was a shift in teachers about 10 years ago, I think the, te the teacher from the middle school went to the high school and they never filled that position. It would be nice to fill again, but I think we cut everything to have no new positions so we could save the staff that we have now. And I mean, there's, it sounds really excessive, I think, the 6.34%, but if you go look at every district they're all asking well over a million, two million, all surrounding towns. And that's what they all got last year. And you know what happened to us last year. Okay, so if, if I could throw something in yes, also. Yes, go ahead. You also run in, you know, it, it, all of us uh, at some point in our youth heard about the, um, the, the magic of compound interest and how, you know, you put a little money in the bank and you get a little interest on it and then you get the interest on the interest and, and you slowly build up wealth. Well, there's also the, the bitter magic of compound disinterest. Every time a school system has to cut to the bone, there are other needs that get left out that at some point may or may not get addressed. The ones that don't get addressed sometimes create real problems. Uh, I saw this working in Wallingford where in some cases the money was really not handled well and there was real there were real deficits in, in maintenance and care. Now one thing I'm really glad to see in this district since I joined the board is it doesn't seem like either the Board of Finance or the or the Board of Education really goes that route. Um, but I mention it as an, an easily understood example. Is it counterproductive to not provide useful programs? Yes. Don't ask us if we're happy. We're not happy. Do we have to make choices? Do we expect at some point we may have to make more choices that are more difficult? Probably. So, the choice of words happy was probably infelicitous. <laughs> But well, in, your, in your opinion, your collective opinions, um, we're not throwing the baby out with the bathwater. We're providing no. the things that are needed at a cost that you guys think 
can be born. It, I, I'll speak for this. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to give you the I'm chance here to say, Jesus, we're ble our hearts are bleeding because we had to cut more than we really wanted to. We and we, we're sacrificing, <laughs> we're sacrificing <laughs> some kid when, to do this. When the superintendent <clears throat> presented her budget and we all sat and we collectively agreed that the most important things are going forward, which is what you saw today. It was very hard for us to cut the other ones. However, we had to make choices. Okay. Um, we don't come to you with a 6% budget, you know, ever. Um, and we certainly did not feel that it would be right to go with nine. You know, if things change, then we can add something in. If there's a windfall, you know, then we'll talk again. And, and there were tremendous financial pressures that we had no control over, the best right. example of which is the increase in special education costs and the increase in uh, insurance. Uh, uh, insurance, yeah, that's what I'm looking for. I mean, we, you know, we're looking at nearly a 20% increase on, and, and people complain about all the money that gets spent on, on staff. Well, it's a labor-intensive business with a highly educated professional staff. There's not another way to do it. AI hasn't gotten that great. I would have given you the chance. And, and, and we we're grateful. It. Don't misunderstand. Yeah. We're grateful. Okay. We'll definitely take Just it to make sure. If you want to give it to us, we'll figure out how to use it. Uh, how about we give you five bucks and you guys go buy a lotto ticket? <laughs> <laughs> Does the Ford event get to keep all the money? <laughs> I don't know. Absolutely. We're not talk about that. <laughs> Stop talking about that. Anyway, thank you. I, I just wanted to give them a, a chance to. I appreciate that. Thank you. Everybody else good? Anything else? I, I did have something. And um, uh, I apologize. I can't remember if this was from last year budget or the um, tri-board meeting. But I know that um, math scores had been an issue. And I didn't hear anything about any kind of math uh, additional resources or anything like that. So was that so last there were year or was that? Interventionists like paraprofessionals to assist interventionists that were requested that were cut. There were two paraprofessionals to assist in that role, and that was cut at the middle level. Okay. And then I just had a question about the book, and I apologize because I'm new. So I just in looking over the um, board of ed part here. I'm seeing 2021 20, actual, 2122. What page are you on? Page 137, 136, 135. Anything. A bit of their budget book in our budget book. Is that, okay, so my, so my question is, we got 20, 2021, 2122, 22, 23 budget, and I'm just wondering if, if we have 22, 23 actual at this point. And then the last part in red is 23, 24, Four budgets, so that would be the current year we're in now. So where exactly is the? Do we not have the proposed twenty-five in here? I don't know what you're looking at. I'm sorry. Good. Yeah. <laughs> did it? You should. I so just literally took snippets of what was posted online. Three unaudited June numbers. You should. Which is four budget on there? You pulled the twenty twenty-four budget. The twenty twenty-five budget is up there as well. This is the 2024 budget. That's, that's what's so, in there, or that's what printed? I don't know if that's what printed, but I have see. both budgets up there. So. so you're looking at the 2024 budget? OK. That was I don't know what's wrong. Yeah, I'm looking and looking and see if I can find it. OK, so we'll get that updated. So, yeah, we'll get that. Yeah. OK. It should be on the website. It's on the website, too, their website, too. It's on our website under business I just services. pulled it right off of there, but apparently, or this was last year. Or you year's pulled last detail. year's. Yeah. Let me go into. Just take a look and make sure the one with the budget is right on the website, too. Yeah. Is Lewis still here? Sorry, it's going really slow. The dollar amount in the line item is correct? 
Yeah, the I see the total, the total, the very first number. So on here, if you go to the East Hat, I'll pull it up right now. There you go. So on the East Haddon website, under the business services, um, you can click on the 2425 proposed budget. You'll see the um, 23, 22-23 unaudited June numbers. Yep. Because we're not audited. You'll learn about that later. The 2024 budget. Um, right. And so that's where we are now. And then the first 25. one is the budget okay. request, and that was the request from the uh, administrators. Um, then you have your superintendent request uh, changes, and then what the Board of Education has proceeded to. Okay. So I apologize. I was confused on this because my color scheme was different. Yeah, and it, I don't <laughs> think that what I put in there printed, so that's not good. Sorry. So, but it is on the website. We'll be happy to get you a hard copy of it as well. Okay. Yeah, I didn't know if we maybe want to update our pages. Yeah, or? so that's 52 pages. That's definitely not what's included in ClearGov, so I wonder if it would it be easier if we just got you a copy of that to put in. Um, yeah, I mean, like, if we could have these detail pages yeah. but with the correct year, that would be great. And, I, and you know, showing the original and the cuts, that's great. Yeah, because that's not what that is. So let me, um, we can add that. So the way our budget works is basically it's the details. So it starts with the overall budget, goes into overall bu all budget by um, um, by function total, and then it breaks down by school. So right. you'll see each school, budget by object, um, and then budget by function. So it really gets into the nitty nitty gritty. And it is 52 pages long. So I don't know whether you want all 52 pages in your book. But you're welcome to them. They're on the website. Um, and in the nitty-gritty, you also get the comments and information. So in some of these places, you'll see what was cut, why it was cut. You'll see the nice pretty purple there um, as to what was removed or what was added or what was requested. It gives you your line items on each area. So it's a very, very detailed um, process yep. that the Board of Education goes through. Um, and it's all, like I said, up on the website. So we can print all 52 and get them to you or... We could just do the summaries of each page. Yeah, I mean, I don't know what school, um, whatever is easiest for you. Summary would be great. If so we can do it. Through, yeah, let me. We can do the system wide. I, I mean, the district wide why. summary, and then each one of the school summaries for you. Right. And that way, you have okay. At least that's only seven pages. So yeah, it's a little bit less cumbersome. That's great. I'll get those to you. Did you have anything else more? That's all. Thank Good. you. Thank you, Rebecca. Um, is there an update on the H back? Not heard back yet. Have any districts heard back? Um, I'm not sure. I'm sorry. That any district has heard back on the HVAC right. grant. We have not heard back on the HVAC grant. Have it, but have any districts? No, we don't no, have that. They will announce it no. all together at once. Yeah. <laughs> Typically, everything gets announced at the same time. We're still waiting. We know that um, when we share the vote passing, they acknowledged it, and so they're they're just taking. I guess the time they need to get through all of the applications. What are you guys budgeting for professional development for this year? What is that? We lowered that to? for this year, so I believe it was 30. Um, it's unlikely for me to get into the right page in one shot. Um, so we lowered our uh, request from the original sixty-five thousand dollars to thirty thousand five hundred and twenty. Is that so? For, almost in half. Is that for the whole district? That's for the whole okay. district. So how do you guys go about identifying who is going to be providing the professional development? Is it known at this point in time? No, it's typically by schools. They already had a contract, for example, with Great Schools Partnership, work that had been done in the past, and so that carried forward this year and so the administrators um, have all been looking at the progress at their building levels and that is one of the areas we're really going to dig into based on output of that work so that will be part of our planning for this summer okay, so it's not going to be known in we have not entered into any contract <coughs> sorry but it's come to my attention that there's been some training at the elementary school that I think is a little inappropriate for children of that age. Um, that's what the PRISMS Counseling Center 
um, it focuses on LGBTQ, transgender. Um, they put stickers all over the doors and the buildings. And, you know, I can picture that being at the middle school and the high school, but having that in an elementary school where there's preschool children, I don't understand the point of that. It's, it's inappropriate. The professional development was apparently contracted for adults. Right. right, but they have their stickers all over the doors. And children are starting to ask questions. So what does this mean? And my children have asked me that. What does this mean? And I'm personally not ready to talk to my children about that. So I just wanted to say that out loud that, you know, I'm, again, something that I'm not happy about. Um, it's, you know, it, to me, it doesn't make sense. There's no sex ed, to my knowledge, at the elementary school. So why are we kind of layering on other aspects of sexuality? Um, to me, it's not, you know, just about everyone feeling welcome. It's something that's sexual, and it, I think it's inappropriate. Thank you. Okay, anybody have anything else? We're good. Uh, Dr. Griegel, thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thank you very uh, much. Awesome to have a very healthy <coughs> sample of the Board of Ed that's here. very and supportive. Our administrators. all being there. Yeah. Thank you guys all very much for your hard work, and uh, we'll look forward to continuing on through the process here. So, thank you so much. There, oh, yeah. Um, um, Is that your Joe, I'm so sorry. Is there an audience of citizens? Uh, after, where are we here? I'm sorry. Um, and we can, oh, wait, you can I thought it was already on there. It is, but we're, we have to talk to the calendar, and then we have to approve minutes, yeah. and then <coughs> we can run through the approval and, of minutes quickly. Mm -hmm. Okay. We just need so to later. discuss the rest of the budget calendar, oh, too. Oh, special meetings are killing me here. I'm, yeah. My brain really needs to catch up. Which one was on budget early. calendar's next. Yeah, yeah budget calendar. Okay, uh, Valerie, where do you just want us to go to page? So I'm just looking. Well, um, I, I have just the snapshot of March, right, in our... In our packets. Now we move back to our packets. We should have, this? yes, yep. Uh, you'll go through the agenda and then there's a, okay. a snapshot of March. So um, today we're at the 11th, right? We started at 4.30. So we're working with some room availability here and stuff like that. So trying to get an idea of who we want present at our next workshops based on Historical, uh, Linda was great and she gave me some historical agendas to say who's typically showed up and stuff like that. So, um, like next Saturday, this Saturday the 16th, it would have been a lot of the town government departments, selectmen, legal, probate, assessor, all the buildings, facilities, town clerk, um, and Don, Linda, and I, and Irene will be here to talk about those. If you guys are comfortable with that, we, we can roll with that. We got into the small commissions, conservation commission to ag commission, um, along with the redevelopment agency, land use, and I won't name them all, um, and even some shared services. All of that on like one day on a Saturday. That's Saturday, yeah. They're little departments. Okay, I just um, didn't know if we were still on the and, same day. And as you go through, um, I don't know if you want to note it, but this was from March 11th last year. You could even look at the agenda and get an idea of what departments they would be. I'm just trying to mock through what we did last year. So then we touch on um, next Wednesday, the 20th. We have only between 4.30 and 7. We have a hard stop at 7.00 because the Board of Selectmen start at 7. Um, that was typically when we would see Public Works about their operate, all their four budgets, operational and then capital. Uh, last year we had Board of Ed come back for some clarifications on their operating budget and their capital budget, and we looked at fringe benefits again. 
um, the next Saturday, the 23rd, we would have handled public safety, police, residency, trooper, fire department, emergency management, paramedics, um, culture and recreation, which is library, rec, towns and greens, and lakes, and health and social services, youth and family, early <coughs> childhood, senior services, human services, cemeteries, things like that. Um, and that will get us through the majority. We have that last Wednesday, the 27th, which I confirmed with Linda, we don't have a hard stop on, which is almost good. So we can continue to deliberate. We have room availability again as early as 4.30. We talked about death service, interfund transfers, devised plans on capital requests, um, talked about the impact of the mill rate, where we were at that point after we went through all the departments. Um, and that's what last year looked like. Not sure if you guys are looking to follow the same cadence. I think it's fine to follow that, um, loosely at least. I think I'm more concerned about having enough time to deliberate after the fact. So I just want to make sure all of these are going to technically be special meetings, right? Right, because they're out of cadence with our regulars. So can we just make sure that we put on the agenda the, the however you have to phrase it, this you know discussion of yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. We always and have impact to mill rate and taxation and all that stuff. Yeah. Throw all the keywords in there. I just want to make sure it's on all of them. Like, yeah, yeah. I'll save you help. What I'm thinking here. Um, when do we have to be? We have to be finished by the 27th. Yeah, kind of, pretty much. If we want to get um, the public hearing. I, I'm I'm wondering if we could squeeze some in in the beginning of April. I haven't looked at room availability. We can keep kind of churning on this, but we're slated for a public hearing on April 16th. The call to town meeting on the 18th, and the a the annual town meeting on the 30th of April. Well, I I think, barring some unforeseen disaster, we should be able to get. We should no, be able to get that. Date would be April 1st. That, would be the that is, that's a lot. Yeah, drop that date is April 1st. Okay. Because of the timing we need in between all of these right. other things to appropriately warn them and get everything published and situated. So we have one, two, three, four, five workshops, which I think is historically what you guys have done. So we should be able to do it. So I think maybe if we can try to squeeze as many as many folks into the first two and a half workshops here so that we have adequate time to uh, re revisit um, we have to follow up on anything um, I think also and I'm sorry to be Jumping in on you here, Valerie, but can we come into this Saturday with an idea of where we are with the, the budgets that were presented and their potential impact to the to the mill rate and the sum of I mean I can certainly have numbers, but they're always gonna continue to move as we deliberate, right? And then we haven't devised a plan on capital. So those are big drivers. Well, I think that we can I think we can include them to start, right? I mean I don't want to make your life um, hell, but no, uh, it, can we um, do, a, can so we do give some type the, of a benchmark with what operations looks like and yep. then at thir certain thresholds of what additional capital? Yeah, so we have in the back of your budget book, you have all the capital requests uh, by priority. There's a spreadsheet. Yeah, that spreadsheet that you fold out. Yep. Um, kind of with a snapshot, a lot of uh, with funding sources. A lot of undetermined because we'll have to deliberate on all those. Is, um, is this the um, most updated? Uh, yeah, this is after. Week? Yeah, okay. so everything is rated, and if you notice, it's highest priority to lowest priority. It's ah. not by department anymore. Check it's highest to lowest. Um, 
So I will say that these numbers will will drive that mill rate consistently. You know, I mean, I can give you even a snapshot of today what the mill rate looks like, but it wouldn't be fair because we haven't addressed capital, <laughs> right? Well, <coughs> I mean, for, I'd be okay with it because uh, we have to have a starting point somewhere, right? But. Uh, What yeah, so I'm going to get you guys the summary page for Saturday, and maybe it'll give you a better visual instead of all these individual budgets. Right. Um, you know, you certainly need the bottom line yeah. information for the budget. So that summary page can sit in the front, um, and we can continue to deliberate. I just want to make sure I give everybody ample time to request their presence at these meetings, you know? Absolutely. Uh, no, and I appreciate that. I'm not trying to... Not trying to rush the process nor make more work for you. I just no, it's got, okay. Got to try to. It's flying in whether us. we want it or not. It's like a runaway freight train. Well, uh, let's just take a quick minute concerning how we're moving forward to our scheduling this month. Harvey, what are your thoughts? What What do you need to see uh, coming up for this weekend here? Following what you've been saying, I'd like to know. The very, the very first page is what's what do the totals look like? Right? Sure. So that summary page. Yep. Um, Each and know, every total is in the budget book already as you flip through, but I think the summary page, to your point, will show you just a selectman start and a board of ed operational start <coughs> on the expenses. Because we haven't discussed capital. Right. Right. Um, yeah. Let Let's set the capital aside for. Yep. Right. Uh, for a moment. Sure. Um, This is just a pet peeve, but when we start talking to different departments, right, mm -hmm. there's no rhyme or reason. The book and who we're talking to is flipping back and forth and up and down. Um, so in vitamin, the order of the book is in. <laughs> yeah, so that's kind of how we worked some of these here when we worked through, especially the town departments this Saturday. It'll go in line of the book. Okay. We'll probably skip over public works because we're going to see them next week, you know, things like that. Right. But I'll do my best to organize it as much as possible. Yes. The only reason these are all together is because Irene, Don, Linda, and I can speak on all of them because it's kind of like the selectman's budget, you know. Right. I'm assuming you guys are going to want to personally talk to public works, fire department, larger departments. So we're going to have them come in in subsequent meetings. Yeah, because that's how historically it's worked, and that just kind of makes the most sense. We don't want to speak for them; they've got the largest budgets in town, you know. Great, very good. We don't know what capital requests are going to be. They're right, in the right, book. Right, they're in the book. They're in the book. Last okay. page. Now, there's a whole summary of capital, and then. Graphs and details and and stuff okay, like but that. In in thinking about what would happen if in place of a capital number you took the average of the what we've had for capital for the last two or three years, stick that in there as sort of a placeholder and look at where we are, what mill rates would be, and the most sort of the thing. Our homework assignment is sort of in order to get so that when it was a zero mill rate increase, we have to cut X. To get a half a mill rate, we have to cut X, right? So we have some idea where we're starting. Does that make sense to you? 
I mean, so right now we, we sit here and flip through and all oh, that's it all sounds good until you get to the total and you say, oh my God, now we got to go back and start right. whacking things out. So right now we're just operational for town and board of ed, mm -hmm. no capital. Yep. Does include our debt service. Yes. That we already know about, right? Yeah. Does include the projected numbers Bill Lindsay gave us, right? Because we right. want to appropriately fund capital projects, yep. savings, right? So we yep. can bond these other projects. Does include placeholders for other transfers mm. to capital yep. projects, right? The projected mill rate would be 26.41, which is a 0.66 increase. Okay. Can you get that on a hunk yep. of paper for us for yeah. Saturday? Yep. I would appreciate 100%. it. That would be very. I have this like working, yeah. Flowing, it's it, 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 it's you know, all going to change around, right? But right, and we can just. If keep you don't know where you are, how do you know where you're going to go? Right. Does that make sense? Can you and are you going to add in like an average for the capital? Yeah, to? I could do that, and we can just. I could even put this up on the screen at some point, even yep. on Saturday, and we can. Because I just have no frame of reference that. of what average is. I'm sorry. Yeah. I don't have a frame of reference for like what average is yet. So to see, right. yeah, mm -hmm. right, yeah, just some, some 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 kind of reasonable placeholder. Yeah, mm -hmm. sure, I can work on that. So I'm going to move forward with the agendas as they kind of looked historically, and we'll talk about it every meeting. I just wanted to yep. put that out there and try to get a plan for the next four or five times we meet. Great, perfect. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Could I ask another question? Please. Does the Board of Ed do its budgeting work in ClearGov? No. No. The only thing we do in ClearGov is offer uh, capital. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to get you better. So we got to get the right numbers. Yeah. yeah. Well, the numbers in there, but that printout didn't come through the right way. Okay. So the number in the the placeholders in there especially in that mill rate I just mentioned, and that's in the line item, but the, the pull of the image didn't work, so I'm going to get you guys a better image. Okay. I mean, I don't need 52 pages, but like the same yeah, type of... Yeah, I'll book. try to replicate... Three or four same similar type yeah, of information by school, that. by system-wide, yeah. like yeah. it's whatever, it's 10, uh, six pages. And then we all know it's also online if you yeah. guys are bored someday. And yeah, but it's just kind of easier to like have it in front of you <laughs> right, and to be able right. to look 100%. at, so... Yeah. So I have to work on that. I don't Thank know why you. that looks like that in your printout because it doesn't look like that in my example. <laughs> Gotta love that. And we love technology. <laughs> Are you good otherwise? Yes, I yeah. Thank you. Corey, any questions? Good. No, I'm good. With good. That. Rebecca. I want to defer back to Harvey's favorite thing over here, his little cheat sheet where it shows you know the tax and. What it would increase by, but I think that comes on later down the road. I don't know. Well, it probably doesn't make any sense to me what I just said, but we used to get like a, a sheet that <coughs> kind of like the impact of taxes, you know, landing at a particular mill rate. We give an example, maybe. But to the to the people's taxes, like if yeah, if the mill rate changes 0. 0.6, what that means to yeah, that yeah, was an example going okay. through the various increases. No, not. Uh, I think what you're talking about is sort of what I was asking for. Yeah, There's I know that, it, that you're talking about. I see it from 2021. I've seen yeah. a copy of it in my files. Yeah, and we had it last year, too. Oh, okay. I misunderstood right. what you were saying. Okay. No, what I'm saying is <coughs> start with this year's budget, right? Or the, this year's, this current fiscal year. Next fiscal year, if you add... 100,000, 200,000, 300,000, 400,000, a million, apply it to the grand list, what does it mean in terms of mill rate? Is, is that what you're remembering? I think so. I have yeah. to go back through my paperwork. I'm sorry. I thought you were talking about something else. But okay. Well, so we're in the but same either way to do it, it would yeah. work. Yeah. But we need to know where we are and what, what the ta size of the task ahead of us is. Unfortunately, it doesn't seem like... The grand list changed, so any yeah, increase but, is going to be an increase. So, yeah, but the grand list changed so little this time. Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah, it doesn't mean diddly. It's going to not really change at all. So, okay. Thank you. Anything else, Rebecca? No, that's it. Thank you. Okay. Yep. Um,
Is Todd still with us? No, unfortunately. Um, well, then we can blame all the mistakes on him. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, minutes. Okay, so but that's sufficient value. Feel good. About yeah, it. Okay. I'll, yeah, and we'll continue to talk about it at all the other meetings. Perfect. All right. If well, there's something else you guys want to see at any point, we'll make it work. Appreciate it. Thank you. Okay, so let's move on to the approval of minutes. Um, let's start with the regular meeting of February twelfth, and I have a motion to accept the minutes of our regular meeting February 12th, 2024. So moved. I have a second. Second. Watley. Any discussion? I found a few. You can share with me now. Okay. Um, under the first selections report, is it, I, I think BB wrote is B-E-E-B-E. -E -B -E. mm -hmm. Yeah. B-E-B-E. -E -E. Yep. Um, so that's the third bullet point down. I think it's just isolated to that point. And then the fourth bullet point down, um, is that dollar amount correct? I don't think it is. So it's, it looks like 1015K. Was it supposed to be? Are you on the 12th? I'm sorry. Yes. Okay. I don't know what the dollar amount was, but that doesn't look right. Wasn't it 10,000? 10, 10, I thought 10 and a half. Right. Yeah, so, yeah. It's ten point five instead yeah. of an L or a one. Yeah, I I'm sorry because I think I mine. Oh, yeah. It was ten and a half. Right, or ten. I forgot. Okay, I don't know off the top of my head, but. I can clarify that and get that corrected. Thank you. Um, anything else on there, Rebecca? That's all I found. Nice work. All right, perfect. Anybody else? Okay. Um, so with those uh, corrections, um, all those in favor? All right. Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? I am abstain. Thank you. Motion carries. Uh, moving along to the special meeting minutes of February 28th. Can I have a motion to accept our minutes of our special meeting February 28th, 2024? So moved. Thank you. We have a second. Second. Thank you. Uh, any discussion? <coughs> God bless you. Thank you. Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Abstain. Okay, motion carries. Moving along, uh, guest and audience comments. Hi, um, could I trouble you to, uh, don't mean to put anybody on the spot, but we have a hard time picking up the audio. Uh, if you wouldn't mind coming up here and just yeah. you know, stating your name and uh, address for the record. Okay, so my name is uh, Murray Klukas. Uh, and I live at 12 Ledgebrook Road in Moodes. You need the zip code? No, 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 that's great. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, so um, I'm actually here, I think, for a public comment. Is that what you call yes. it? Yeah. Um, so I am um, a parent of two, um, two sons that go to the public schools. One is in the ele elementary school, and the other one is in the middle school. And um, just actually my husband and I um, are both uh, full-time professional workers and we have quite a commute uh, to go to school, like 45 minutes each. Um, and uh, my, my, my oldest, who is um, in seventh grade, 
um, has been involved actually in many extracurricular activities after school. He does jazz ensemble, percussion, <laughs> um, you know, he signed up for the basketball clinic, so he's really active in the school. Um, but um, my husband and I have, have been struggling because um, because of the pickup time, uh, which is at 3.30. Uh, so essentially, in the middle school, they have the bus um, that uh, drops off people around 2.30, or 2.15, 2.30 bus, and then there's no late bus, uh, no 3.30 p.m. bus. Um, and um, and I, I wanted to bring this up because I know that in many other districts, they do have a late bus. Um, and I know with the state of the budget that um, probably this is not going to be <laughs> the right time to mention that or well received at all, but I think that that's something we should consider having in our town okay. uh, because I'm really concerned actually that um, we are not the only family struggling um, with, with this, um, you know, uh, with this problem of having to pick up the kids at 3.30 with no public transportation. Um, I'm actually sure it's probably more of an equity issue because I'm thinking certain groups are probably a lot more impacted by this than others. Um, and I would think that actually um, my, my concern uh, is that there are quite a few kids in the district that are not able to participate in those extracurricular activities because there's no transportation. Um, and that to me is very concerning. Uh, so not just for myself and my own family. I mean, we've been, uh, it's been a real challenge for us and we've been really stressed about it, but we've managed mm -hmm. uh, to make it work. Um, but I really, I'm really concerned about it on a larger scale, actually. Um, so I wanted to bring this up. Um, and I also wanted to mention, since I've been attending the whole meeting today, um, that uh, I'm really also concerned about uh, the budget um, that was being proposed for the Board of Ed. Um, and uh, I know they were talking about a 6% increase, uh, and that's really awful. <laughs> but like the 9% increase was even worse. <laughs> but considering some of the um, items that were um, cut from that budget proposal, um, I'm worried because like professional development being cut by 50%. I want to make sure that my kids are being taken care of uh, properly in the schools. Actually, one of the reasons my husband and I moved here more than 10 years ago is because of the schools, because East Haddam has a good reputation uh, with its schools. Um, and we are a pro property owner in town. Um, and, um, and I really think that, uh, and I know last year was a bit of a mess uh, with the referendum, um, but I think, we, I think we should fight to, to pass a better budget for our town. We shouldn't just um, accept that it's going to be a challenge and uh, let it go and, and just, you know, make those concessions. Uh, because those are important things that we're talking about. We're talking about our, our, our children being educated in town. And... Um, and those are individuals that will go into um, other colleges, um, you know, in the, in the state and maybe become productive citizens of this state. I, I am a college professor at Tanksis Community College, um, so I know a lot of the issues with the state budget, the salary increases. Um, we know also about the cost of infl uh, the inflation increase and the cost of living. And I think that's a big part, actually, of the increase in the budget because everything has been increased in cost and prices. But um, I, I, I have a hard time like just sitting there and accepting that this is where we're at. Um, you know, I just, I just hope that um, people can understand that having children that are being taken care of adequately in the town and giving this town a good reputation will benefit everyone in town. Um, and it is a priority. <coughs> so those are all concerns of mine. Well, well said, and thank you, because as someone who sits here every year and, and begs people to come to our meetings, I really appreciate you being the first person to come and speak and share your concerns on um, on the budget process and what you would like to see be improved. So it is a huge help. It is heard. Our, our board is, uh, mm -hmm. uh, I like to think that we're, uh, we really do work hard to 
to take our fellow citizens into account when we're making these decisions. So uh, it hits home. And as far as the transportation issues go, you know, we'll definitely share those mm -hmm. uh, concerns with the board of admin. Um, like you said, you know, it's unfortunate. We're we're very we're very sympathetic, and we want to see the, we we want to see all these needs met. It mm -hmm. really is the try not to pass the burden on to uh, to all of our, our fellow homeowners. So, but very much appreciated and um, and very well said. So, thank you so much. And I know there are lobbying efforts um, by uh, the different boards uh, of education and so on um, to lobby with the legislature to try to uh, improve the budget. So I hope that's actually fructitious and something happens. Uh, I know at Tanksys Community College, we're also uh, the union is also very vocal at the Capitol, trying to increase the state funding uh, because we're also being cut um, you know, on every front. Uh, but I think it hits even more home when we're talking about our children. Um, and so if the state cannot help, I really hope at least that uh, town members um, can try to want to help as much as possible. So, um, you know, so, so I think that's really... Oh, and I did talk to the uh, superintendent of schools. I mentioned that to her. Uh, she, so she knows about the situation with the bus as well. Uh, I think she told me she was going to mention it today, but I don't think she got around to doing it, maybe because of all the, <laughs> the questions and the other concerns that were brought uh, at the table. But uh, yeah, so I understand the situation we're in, but I thought at, at least I would do my part and try to raise my concerns. We are very grateful to you. Thank you. And please feel free to continue to. Um, that's what we do. We really do appreciate it. So thank, thank you. you. Thank you. And Joe, could I add? Oh, please. Thing? Yes, I'm sorry. I just want to clarify um, the budget process with you. And yes. forgive me if you might already know this, but um, so we're kind of like not at the end of the budget process. And like Joe said, we're really happy to receive comments. So I don't want you to think that mm -hmm. these cuts are where they're going to stay. Okay. I mean, you know, it's all about you know, refining the budget. So I didn't want you to think that this is where we're at right now. So things are still gonna be moving. We're, this is the beginning of our workshops. So so you think there might be money for a late bus? This seat? Well, <laughs> and then we still have to go through a referendum. So, uh -huh. you know, it's, it's not, nothing's set in stone right now. So hopefully you don't mind me adding no, 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 that, please, Joe. I okay. appreciate it. Yeah. Um, so I think, so any, any additional expenditure would have to go, would first have to go through the, the board ed they yes. would have to map it out, and then um, I'd be lying to you if I told you exactly what the process would be, where they would come for funding, but it would probably go would go into the, the normal budget process, yes. and it would be a line item specifically. So, um, so to be completely honest, it probably wouldn't happen this year. But uh, but I would encourage you to continue to stay engaged with the board ed, um, and I mean that's that's where to really get the the idea and it's yeah. the conception and. Uh, uh, yeah, and take it from there. It is a, it's a bloated process, and it's exhausting, and uh, we all totally get that, but I think that'll be the, uh, uh, it, it's definitely heard and appreciated. And, and yeah, so I wish would I would have come forward earlier, but um, it's just happened that I didn't even know that a late bus was an option <laughs> until I spoke to my work colleagues who told me, what, you don't have a late bus in your town? And I said, no. They, and they said, well, we have one. And so I was like, OK, well, that's new, you know, not something that I'm aware of. Um, so, so I rang the uh, super, <laughs> superintendent of schools, and I asked about this. And, and that just happened last week, so um, very last minute. Well, you're probably still way ahead of any other ideas. That you <laughs> so I would encourage you to uh, keep up with it so. and, uh, you know, and, and really write it out and see where, uh, see where it ends up. So I wish I had better information for you at this point. But so you're uh, saying I should follow up with the Board of Ed now? I would start there, yeah, because anything that, that, that gets to us is going to have to go through the whole. The, uh, board. the Board Ed sets their own budget, and they make their, even though they like present to us here, uh, realistically due to the, uh, the, the state laws, they're kind of their own unit in how they operate their budget. So they share it with us, so we can have input and everything, but they, they make that ultimate, uh, okay. they make all the decisions. But but it's great to get on the, the public forum and, and get your voice out there. And, and you know, certainly as, uh, as a, a neighbor, we, you know, we appreciate you and appreciate you being here to, to share with us. So, uh, so thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for your time.
Uh, anybody else? Sir? Um, my name is Mike Callahan. I live at 21 Augusta Circle in Buddhist. Um, I've taken a strong interest in budget and the planning process. Um, I've attended quite a few of the workshops over the last several years. Um, and the other thing I want to say is education is extremely important to me. Uh, my dad was a high school principal. My son is a guidance uh, administrator in the Glastonbury school systems. And uh, all my kids have gone through higher education, and our education is paramount um, to me. Uh, education budget is about two-thirds of the total town budget. So uh, you know, one-third is government, and two-thirds is education, roughly. Um, I, as I looked at the proposals for this fiscal year, this upcoming fiscal year, um, the town numbers and the Board of Education numbers just don't sync up with me. Um, so the town last year was at 13.2 uh, million dollars. And they're, right now, as it stands, they were asking for 15.4 million dollars for next fiscal year. That's a 2.2 million dollar increase. The Board of Education uh, was at 22.8, and they're asking for 24.2, which is $1.4 million increase. It, it just doesn't sync up to me. I mean, it seems like education should be, we should, we should be spending more on education proportionally than we are on the local, local government. I mean, it's, it's just way out of whack, it, it seems to me. Um, you know, one's going up about, I don't know, 7% uh, maybe, and the other one's going up 20%. Uh, just, it's illogical. Um, so that's, that's point one. Point two is, and you, don't, you know this already, but state government has not supported education over the last 10 or 12 years. What they give to the towns is flat. We got $4 million eight years ago. We're getting $4 million now. 0. 0.5. <laughs> or, or less. So it's going down. So in essence, the citizens have to support the increase. And the mill rate, I mean the, uh, excuse me, the, uh, the uh, grand list is not is not increasing or is, is not keeping pace, so that puts more and more bread, more and more burden on the the mill rate and the the is an individual tax holder. So those are all things to consider. Um, there is a large percent of the a population in town on fixed income and elderly, um, but I got to tell you, it's. Very illogical for me that education isn't getting as much money as the town when they're two thirds of the pie. I guess that's that's my point. You know, just to be just to be even, it seems like they ought to go up at least commensurately. So, those are my thoughts. Likewise, I think very well said, and I, uh, again, I'm, I'm, I'm thrilled because I'm always begging for people to participate. So, and I know I really appreciate because you, you're always at our meetings. Thank you, um, first of all, and it really is very helpful because this is we're we're trying to get a, a gauge of what the community is they dedicated to, and and you hit the point we're trying to fund our services, trying to pump out well-educated children that have all their needs met. And 
in trying not to uh, kill the residential tax base. So, uh, so please, just if you would be willing to continue to partner with us as uh, uh, as a fellow citizen, we would be most grateful, and I definitely appreciate your input. Okay. And we're gonna and, and so these are just to clarify these are very preliminary now. We have, oh, I absolutely I mean, understand it. But I just want to get stated that uh, uh, if it were further along in the process, we'd probably be able to break down a few uh, what, what that the disparity looks like a little bit there uh, better. But but yeah, can't thank you enough. Appreciate you being here, Mr. Kelly. Thank you. Thank you. Alrighty. Um, Valerie, do you have a chance to check our uh, public input sure. email there? I don't have anything in the email box. Fantastic. All right. Um, do we need a break or anything? Are we okay? All right. Uh, let's see. Let us move on to the finance director's report. All right. I'm just flipping through a million pages. Here we go. Okay, so uh, we have financials in our packet for uh, January 24. There's a great summary page on the front, um, which I always like to reference the percentages that are shown at the bottom. So this is kind of like high level, but for expenditures of the budget for expenses, we're six months into the year in January. Um, should be theoretically 58% through the budget, and our actuals are at 50%, so we have a fairly healthy um, expense budget. I don't see any you know, major jumps or anything crazy going on. Uh, none of the budgets are reporting under or in an unhealthy scenario at this point. Um, flipping to revenue, <coughs> similarly, we're 58% the way through the budget, and we've collected 62% of revenue. Um, some of the, you know, we have, a, we, we do have a healthy tax collection, luckily, and, um, you know, over half of our intergovernmental intergovernment agency revenues have been received. Um, so, so that's a good thing. There's detail now as you flip through the other pages and you can go and, and you know, look budget by budget on revenue and expenses. If anybody has any questions, feel free to let me know. Thankfully, everything is where it should be. Yeah, like halfway through the year. We're like perfectly January, right? Represents kind of just about. I guess December really is, but halfway through the year. Great. Have any questions? Mr. Kelly. I have a question of the tax revenue. So tax bills for the second installment were due in January? Supplemental, yes. Well, then. Well, it would be if anything came in after the October 1st grant list. Yeah, but there's also your second installment for property taxes due in January. Okay. So why wouldn't you be close to 80, 90 percent in terms of revenue? Um, well, that revenue is only a portion of the revenue budget. So if we want to look at exactly oh, okay. where we're talking. at. I can do some quick calculations on the tax budget itself. We have $9 million, $9.5 million to collect out of a $30 million budget. So it is over half. Yeah, why would you? I guess you're missing the point. Well, not everybody pays their taxes either, you know. And people well, pay yeah. in installments and they pay as they can. So I can, I can ask the tax collector for clarification on that. But I don't see what happens in that office. I get reports from her every month. And, and I report to the board. It's just a question. It's, yeah. it's just a logical question. Uh, I think I think they're due January 31st, so I think we're, you, you'll probably see right. a, a, a big you chunk even in people February that pay late in, in February. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> you know, people I, I think even they're technically March. late if they're paid in February. Right. At, 
They're actually due January 1st? Yeah. Right. Well, <coughs> they're due January 1st. Yeah. That's not how everybody yeah. always pays, theoretically. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I see too. what you're saying, but it'll be interesting yeah. to see how February looks. Yeah, no, no I know, but... There are other revenues in the bulk of it, yeah. right? right. Um, so they're, they're 70 percent so collected um, by January. Yeah, I think that's reasonable. I thought we collected about 80. I mean, 95 percent. Like she said, though, some people are on payment, so they're not. Our tax collector must be listening because she's wonderful. So our collection rate as of the end of February is 97.24. End of February. So, end of February, yeah. So, so we'll see a in. huge increase. That was my point. Yeah, we'll see a huge increase as those numbers come in to so February. February. Um, unfortunately, I just enter the number she gives me, so, and the report to the board. I'm going to thank her for that. Mm -hmm. well, She's really on top of that. That's super helpful. <laughs> thank you, Denise. <laughs> All right, excellent. Thank you, Valerie. Mm -hmm. um, Alrighty, uh, move us along to our audit update. Audit update, um, the auditors are due for field work um, <coughs> March 25th. Um, as far as I'm concerned, we're very, very, very late, but we're doing our best. Um, the auditors need a solid two months to start and finish the audit. So we are really pushing ourselves up against the June 30th deadline. Um, when you say we're late, though, they, they schedule us, right? Yeah. It's we our... No, but we were slated to at least start in November. That was where we were on the next schedule. But then in the transition in the office and everything like that, um, we're behind. Okay. Appreciate the transparency. Mm -hmm. um, the good news is we'll meet every couple of days, so if you... you yeah, know, if we can. Yeah. If anything comes up, just let us know. Yes. Uh, any additional questions for Valerie? No, it doesn't help me get through the audit, actually. <laughs> it makes me focus only on budget. <laughs> but right. I will keep you posted. <laughs> All right. We appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, moving along to new business. Um... We have the review and discussion of our East Haven budget process article. Uh, Rebecca, are you prepared to speak to that? Um, yeah, I can speak to it. So we provided this um, article, a similar version of it last year, to provide, provide the public with an overview of the whole process. So um, Todd and I went back through it again, and you know, we always have, a, I know I do, I always have different ideas the second time around. So. Um, the first paragraph is talking about um, the tri-board meeting that we held. Um, this article was published prior to the tri-board meeting last year, so with this article we're talking about it was held, and uh, here's the link where you can see it, but the good thing is that we're able to um, provide a, a general overview of what was discussed by um, the BOS, um, some concerns that they have, areas of focus, um, vacancies addressing the firehouse too, the approach being zero-based budgeting, um, and then the Board of Ed identifying their areas where they want to provide field trips, hire uh, new teachers and professionals, and the YouTube link is provided there. Um, the next paragraph is talking about the process of the super, uh, superintendent working with the Board of Education to develop a budget. Um, you know, the key word is a draft. And the same thing with um, the first select woman, or select man, whatever you want to call it. Um, and how the first select woman works with all the various commissions and departments to come up with their budget. Um, so then, you know, the superintendent and the uh, first select one kind of review it, and then that's presented to us being the Board of Finance um, and uh, disclosing that there is a series of meetings and workshops like this one right now to review the budgets, to make changes, and that we're welcoming the input from citizens um, and also welcoming questions and comments. Um, the third paragraph is talking about ClearGov, which is where we have all of our information for the budgets and providing um, the exact steps as to how to get to uh, ClearGov in that um, paragraph. And then we're providing also the email for uh, budget questions um, directly within that paragraph. And then the last sentence, just uh, last paragraph, is wrapping it all up, saying that we, again, we welcome input and we look, we're looking forward to hearing from everyone. 
Um, so if anyone has any questions or if you want to take it and review it, uh, but Todd and I wrote it, well, <coughs> Todd and I wrote it together, so <coughs> if you make any tweaks necessary. As always, thank you guys for being so thorough. Great addition to the process. So. No problem. I actually just noticed a little typo. There's two periods after the word yeah. comments in the second paragraph. So I'll have to send you one more version of that. That's all right. I, I can I... even correct that. Okay. I'm thinking um, you guys can let me know as soon as possible because we need some time for this to get into East Adam News, too. So I don't want it to go after our March workshops, you know yeah. what I mean? I think Tom um, wanted to send it as soon as we could after the uh, board gets to review. Right, it. so if we think it's okay, like after tonight, I can, I think Thursday's my deadline yeah. to get it in. Yep. So I, I have at least one question here. Um, when it talks about the Board of Education and identifying many areas of focus for the new fiscal year, such as continuing field drop opportunities and then hiring new special education teachers and paraprofessionals. Is that, did they add? No, I think I'm, those ended up getting cut. cut. Did they get cut? Is that what those displays? Yeah, they said today? all, all yes. positions. Yes. Yeah, so there were no positions added. All to positions. Okay. So I'll have to edit that. Yes, yeah, so don't, don't hang the, don't, don't hang it around their neck. Yeah, yeah. Mm, I know. Right. All right, I'll have to remove that. Yeah. I missed that part. Okay. And then the other question, I guess, is um, how does the, the average everyday citizen find out when that we're meeting next Saturday and the following Saturday and maybe some Monday evenings. I think we provide um, instructions as to where to find our meetings. YouTube links and a table of the budget process calendar. Yeah. 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 So okay, so. It, third paragraph. Okay, so. It's, Is it, that? It's not. Mm. Does that take is it, to the isn't town it worth calendar? listing them on the bottom of the article? That's a good idea, especially since we just reviewed yeah. the oh, calendar wait. right now. So these schedules, the clerk of link and the presentations from the tri-board meeting can be found on the East Ham Town website. While on the website, click on boards, then board of finance, then budgets, then fiscal year 25, then budget process. Don't we have the calendar up there? I'm not sure we do because we just kind of set it. So okay. we can. Okay. I think Certainly. You guys think this is yeah. Right. We normally have this I'm gonna. Under budget process. We have the ch presentations and stuff mm -hmm. under there now. But aren't we planning on providing the calendar? The yeah, we okay. we certainly can put up. Now that we have our times and everything and yeah. departments. Thank you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> it really works the other way around. You did the work. Yeah. All right. Um, yeah, so if you, and all, all I'm doing today is make, volunteering other people for work, but if, uh, if you have the opportunity to make those changes, yep. if you want to send them out, Numbers conveniently, we can. I think we can at least not approve, but offer commentary or whatever via email, right? And then yeah. So are we gonna? Out, uh, do we have? When is our next meeting? Can, like, when is it gonna actually get in the paper if we don't approve it tonight? Well, I think you need to get it by Thursday. I need to get it to Thursday. them. Yeah. Right. So, so, so we for one week because we're gonna have to pay for it. So luckily, uh, but so than, I meet the deadline. Other than not. Mentioning the additional staffing at the elementary school, just put that out, and perhaps adding the dates of our dates and times of our board of finance meetings. Why can't we say good to go? With the agreed I'm, I'm, I'm upon. I'm asking. I'm yeah. Not. You mean listed out in the article, or maybe bullet points at the bottom? 
just bullet points in the yeah. bottom. Yeah. Yeah. How, just... However you want to do it, but I think bullet points would be enough. I'll reach out to Todd tomorrow just to run Great. these by him. Right. Whatever what you guys decide. Yeah. Good to go. Okay. Yeah, we never have a formal motion on that anyhow, right? Or, or, or we approved them, I think, when the, the first the first meeting? Is that how we did that? Because there's the series of them, right? Yeah, so we just asked for comments or questions, and I think we're oh, six okay. good to Perfect. go. That's right. I don't think okay. there's a motion. Okay. Yeah, I don't think we... So then you'll make those adjustments and get it to her for Thursday? Uh, circulate it first, right? Oh, okay. if, yeah, if you have yeah. the opportunity, that'd be great. And okay. Okay, thank you. Round out here and go back to uh, one more round of guest and audience comments. Anybody have anything to add? Mr. Dill. Oh. Make it quick. Please. I don't know what he was doing back there. So I don't want to get into a back and forth with Mr. Callahan, but the numbers you say don't make sense or didn't come out correctly. When we get back to the one third, two thirds, if we, I think if we add capital, in, right? To the, so in other words, capital goes on the town side, capital goes on to the Board of Ed side, then you get your one-third, two-thirds. But because all of the capital is put onto the town, it skews. And if I'm misspeaking, please let me know. Does that make sense? I don't, just, I don't know. I was just looking at... Yeah, I mean, to your point, Eric, if we take the $37 million and, and take out the education operational budget, the town budget is $15.6 Because we fund capital, we fund debt service, we fund all the other departments. I think you get back to your one-third, two-thirds. Yes, yeah. I yeah. just wanted to clarify. Thank you. Yeah, and there, I mean, there are a lot of uh, factors as well. Like, uh, the, like last year, the no, – I don't have the numbers off the top of my head, but um, – the town side took the took the hit when we when it got to cutting right mm -hmm. so so if it were balancing out if you looked over at it over the course of several years then the, the, they should balance out but but yeah point is point well taken but it's uh, a oh, go ahead. oh no 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 please I, I would ramble it's a matter of where certain things get booked right that um, if you book all the capital <laughs> expenditures against the town side of the budget, that's, as Mr. Dill is saying, that's kind of that plus the interfund transfers and all that stuff. And the reserves and all that, right. right. Yep. It's in the book. All right. Yeah, I was just looking at the, the numbers. It, it, right. Yeah, yeah get right. into them and make sure we that. Hit the nail on the head, though. I mean, that's been pretty much the breakout the last several years, so uh, pretty active. Um, all right, wonderful. Uh, any other public comment? Um, I'm going to check the email one last time. I don't have any new emails at this point. And I will reach out to Todd and communicate with him. Um, follow up on this evening. We're back for 9 a.m. on Saturday. And Does anybody know if Todd will be in person or will we have to call him again? As far as I know, he will be here in person. Okay. If, uh, if not, I will, I will let you know. Okay. Um, I'm just curious. I have a budget book for him, so. I think that's where we are. So, okay. Um, well, that being the case, thank you all for being here. Can I have a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Second? I second. Call. Thank you. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Thank